Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower, and through grand halls past lock and key, came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second love defiled by spite, the third a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken, something blighted had come hither, foul as nightshade creeping thither, from yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, his wounded heart had one desire, a ballad from the dreaming queen could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, but toys would be his shield and spear, and so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, the prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things, but listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear, a song that calls the spirits there, a song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal, a rocking horse with ashen mane. Around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame with mighty hooves and sturdy frame. No better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne. The prince then found a toy of bone. Lettered blocks stacked to the sky when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass, marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion, each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toys placed in a chest with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power, once upon a witch light hour. The four of you are exhausted as you wake up in a tavern in the middle of Ogway, the tavern known as the Crossroads. You've been traveling together for years, but over the past month, you've been spending your time in Ogway because this is Crummy's home. And all of you had been running a mock carnival of sorts called what is it called again? <laughs> Fuck. Carnival. 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 It's had many names, many iterations <laughs> until the finalized one. Carnival La Crew. But due to some unfortunate happenstance, you had to let the carnival go for now. And you took off with whatever money you had left and made your way to Ogway, where Kremi had some connections. One Remy Guru. And over the past month, you've been staying at the crossroads, enjoying nice room and board. It's been a pretty penny, but it's been worth every bit. The problem is, Remy Guru hasn't been responding to any of your attempts to get into contact with him. So the night prior, you decided to make your way on down to the hungry catfish and see if you could get his attention. Now you were unable to get his attention, but his bullywugs, the grinning sinners, you definitely got theirs. And they got your coin. As you wake up this morning, all of you hung over, you make your way down to the <clears throat> tavern area of the crossroads. You order your breakfast and Kremi begins to shake out your coin purse. As you realize between the four of you, you only have two gold pieces to your name. Not nearly enough to pay for any more nights in this place. And this is the only place that you could see yourself staying in all of Ogway. At least the only place that you'd be welcome. Fellas, I got bad news. What? We flat broke. Again? 
Well, I mean, like, for real this time. Not like flat broke as men. Oh, you know, well, you know. Like, we all have to get jobs because we're about to run out of money. Th this is it! And I hold up the... I, I rub my two gold pieces together. This is all we have left. What the fuck did Pierre put in our drinks? I knew I shouldn't have trusted him. He seemed a little too friendly. You remember Pierre. He was one of the first bullywugs that encountered you when you made your way into the Hungry Catfish. He helped you find a table, and he even uh, led your way to some of the, the hottest tables, the hottest games. Yes, and, and I think Pierre pulled one over on And us. you do remember that at one point during the night, he provided you all with a free drink on the house. Guys, I have a confession to make. I don't think I understand the rules of poker. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, based on my observations, uh, you absolutely do not understand the game of poker. <laughs> you kept gambling when you had nothing and throwing away hand after hand of pure gold. I think you had a royal flush of them. Yeah, but I mean, the colors, the uh, the numbers look so nice. <laughs> the two is just etched very nicely. We're going to have to work on our poker game. <laughs> Okay. You also need a poker face. When you look and you go, hoo hoo, that doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work. Who let these guys gamble with our money? You know, kid, I should have known to cut them off. I should have, I should have like put a lock on on, a, on my, my my coin <laughs> purse. But I don't know. I feel like I blacked out and just it's all gone. To be completely fair, Gideon, I was up. I was up by quite a bit ca card counting until that drink from Pierre, <laughs> and then I lost. <laughs> the plot, so to speak. I refuse to believe it was that free drink. I've never had a free drink treat me wrong. <laughs> well, I guess it's the first time for everything, kid. I, I guess I have heard the saying, I think a wise man once said that the only thing better than a drink is a free drink. <laughs> Do you, any of you even remember us getting back to this inn? The last thing I remember... You do. We do. <clears throat> your your recollections of the night before were <clears throat> a bit hazy, but you you remember many more drinks than just the free one that Pierre gave you. <clears throat> it was almost like once you, once you popped the top, you just couldn't stop. As the first drink went down, you wanted more and more and more, and the the need for sin was so strong in all of you. And you just wanted to play games drink um you took a turn around the um the outside of the hungry catfish and smoked fine cigars uh, and it was it was a lovely evening you came home though you came home uh with a significantly lighter coin purse the joy that you'd had together was profound i never i never smoke cigars makes my mouth feel all tacky well, like we did last night, but you know, at the end of the day, sinning's kind of fun. Don't Grico you think? ate his cigar. I'm just kidding, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see him do it. Oh, oh this paper! Oh, you did throw up after you ate the cigar, didn't you, Grico? <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't feel that terrible. My understanding is that if you soak tobacco in water, it creates arsenic. So you're probably going to die if you haven't thrown up. Come on, come on, come on, come I'm gonna go run and puke up a bunch of us. <laughs> <laughs> What's the rule for that? Roll a, con, to die. a con saving throw <sighs> that you choose. I feel like out. a con saving throw to see if you throw up or not is the perfect way to start this uh, campaign. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I mean, this might be able to cover breakfast, but we're, we're gonna find some way to make some dough. This isn't gonna last us. So we have to. You know, I guess start looking for work. I can try to reach out to some of my lesser contacts in town. For some reason, Guru just won't see me. He won't. He won't reach out to me. He won't. You know, answer any of my letters. And you know, Pierre said that he would put in a good word, but you hear the door to the tavern open, and you look over and you see nobody enter. It slowly swings shut, but you hear the patter of feet. As you look down, you see standing at your side, Kremi, one of Guru's grinning sinners. He looks up at you and hands you a note. Is it Pierre? It is Pierre. <laughs> Pierre! What are you doing here? Pierre, 
What was in those drinks you gave us? No. You don't know? You're serving what? drinks, you don't know what's in the... Uh, I, don't know. I remember this from last night. Uh, it seemed to me making more sense by the end of the evening. This is very troubling. Oh. <laughs> You see he shakes his head, and then he looks between all of you. He looks a little bit sad as he turns and makes his way out of the tavern. Oh, I guess he's just doing his job. I think there's nothing left for arsenic. Oh, goodbye, Pierre! (laughs) You know the seasonal cocktail of uh, the Pringle? That was, I'll just, you know, once I popped, I just couldn't stop. (laughs) Is that what that was called? Yeah, that's what, I don't know what it meant, but it was... It has an apt name for some reason. Do you want uh, the remainder of my breakfast? It's very important that you eat. <laughs> oh, the eggs I still have the all. shells on them. I should have waited. <laughs> Peed after I threw up all the arsenic. Well, you can have a few items here. Uh, I'll take half ration if you uh, can get your strength up. Oh, Frosty, that's very nice. I know how much you enjoy breakfast. I mean, I appreciate your sacrifice. It's my pleasure. I look at the letter. The letter is on a very heavy parchment. It is the official letterhead of one Remy Guru. And it is titled, To Kremi Lacru and to those whom it may concern. Family. And I rip it open and all. Oh, this is all big break, Kremi! Kremi Lacru. This is a notice of debt owed to one Mr. Remy Lacru. Remy Guru. God, these names are hard. (laughs) Uh, upon your abandonment of your station, you took with you valuable knowledge un- un- unpaid for that belongs to Mr. Guru. It has, it has been noted that you have traveled and it shows a list of the different places that you've traveled. Almost every single place that you've traveled. You have set up shop here. You've ran this con here. You've done this here. Mr. Guru has chosen to impose a 10% um, a 10% overhead for all of your cons, leaving a total of 100,000 gold pieces owed to Mr. Guru by end of month. And then it is signed with a flourish and his stamp. In fine print at the bottom, it says, should Mr. LeCru... Um, should Mr. LeCru meet his fate or his end, his f- his friends, Grico Grimgrin, Morning Frost, and Gideon Cole are considered guilty by association, and the debt will be um will be theirs to cover forthwith. What? Um uh, so good news and bad news. Oh, good, I love good news! You want the good news first or the yes, bad news? Yes, of course, first? the good news. Yeah, yeah, I love good news. No, there isn't any good news. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's all bad news. Oh, no! I don't like bad news! <sighs> Guru's correcting, collecting royalties. Thank you. That was on, every, on every penny that I made since I left Agua. I don't know how the hell he knows about all this. Well, fuck. Look, he even knows about the time we salted the mines up in the uh, Grizzle Paul Mountains. He knows about the mines? He knows about... Oh, I don't know about what else happened in the Grizzle Paul Mountains. <laughs> um, let's say that. Oh, he, do, he does. Oh, oh no. no. You uh, see that there's a significant tab um, for when you were in Beaver Creek. Oh, oh, and the, uh, uh, a tab at Beaver Creek, remember that? Mm. Were we with them at, during... All these. Oh yes, okay. for most of them at least. There, there are a handful them, yeah. that you weren't. Wait. But well, I've tried to forget Beaver Creek, but you don't forget something like that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if if we owe uh, his fella uh, a little bit of coin, well, it can't be like what five hundred gold pieces. No, try higher than that. Six hundred gold pieces. No, more than that. Oh, and is the number of digits four, five, or six? Oh, it's six. I don't know. We, we, look, oh, look. we only owe him six gold pieces. No, no well, a hundred thousand gold pieces. The entire tavern <laughs> gets completely quiet <laughs> as you see everyone who's awake look over at you, and then they start. They begin to start whispering. Did they just say that they have a hundred thousand gold pieces. We gotta keep this down. Wait, how much money did the carnival make? Well, I mean, it made him. Look, you said we didn't make anything. 
I mean, I had to, you know. Do you know how many IOUs you paid us? <laughs> you imagine that the elephants cost a lot of money. You know how? I mean, how much it takes to feed Bootsy? Yeah, I'll, I'll, feed, I'll, I'll, I'll feed her rat snacks. You know how many bullywugs we? I had to pay basically nothing to. If you pay a lot of people basically nothing, I mean, it, 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 it's a lot of money. It ends up being something. It does. <laughs> it ends up being something. Now, now, hang on, hang on. I have a little bit of an idea. How, how much does everybody have? <laughs> we have we have two gold pieces. <laughs> you know, you know, he, he's, he's not really a morning person. Uh, what? Th- th- this is it. It, it is literally look. See these one, two. That's it. That's all we have. I mean, you, unless you're y'all are. We have ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety eight gold pieces to go, Gideon. <laughs> I, and I think I know how we can get there. <laughs> oh, today. How are we gonna do it? We head on back over to Rem and Guru, meet up with Pierre. Nobody takes that free drink, and we put Frosty back on the tables. It's gonna sound like a bad idea, seeing as how we're here, but. Maybe it's not. Oh, so uh, look, I, I, I trust Frost's uh, card counting ability, but you really think Mr. Guru is going to let someone count cards and win 100,000 gold pieces without losing a cent? It's not like he's got to do it a whole lot. We just have to go from two to 100,000. How much can that be? It yeah, how, be... Many, how many times, Frosty? Run the numbers here. How many times do we need to double or nothing? I'd need to win a hand every two minutes, and it would have to be a double or nothing every single time. For eight hours. hours. <laughs> uh, look, I, what are the odds of that? You know, Gid, let me tell you what Mr. Guru does to fellas like that. They make a lot of money, and then all of a sudden I notice their boots washing up uh, along the banks of the swamp. Oh, uh, well, fuck. <laughs> oh, wait. I was just going to ask, I mean, is, 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 is Remy, uh, Mr. Guru, the kind of guy that you would, you know, you find owing a little money to? Let, kind of like Can a, I just say that there's probably no one worse to owe money to? We, we need to be out of debt because at any second he could collect. Let me tell you, I mean, he's got, he has a lot more friends than I do on the other side and... If he, if he wants to, he could he could make us all have a real bad day. One in 230,108,042. Well, you thought it was good odds? Good odds. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 good odds. No. I'm not, not going to sugarcoat it for you, Rico. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's bad odds. So, I mean, we gotta, we got to make a lot of money quick. And I don't, I, I, I hate to do this. I, I, I didn't think I would sink this low, but I think we might not have any other choice than, but to go to the, 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 the I won't say it. Okay. The, 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 the job board. Uh, oh, no. Honest not the job work. Board. You, you must be really scared if you're talking about honest work, Kremi. I mean, just an, a, a legitimate gig where you just labor and get paid for it? Ugh. Well, I mean, do, what if we can just get more time? Can't we just say, oh, Mr. Why don't we just talk to Mr. Guru? I'm sure it's just a bit of a misunderstanding. No, 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 you, no look, you do not understand. There is no misunderstanding. I'm sure that when I made my deal, I signed something. I'm sure he's got a contract somewhere that I didn't read close enough. And even if he's making it all up, I'm not going to risk setting foot in his office. Oh. Unless I have all 100,000 gold pieces in my hand. Jobs. Well, how much time did he give us? By the end of the month. A month. By oh, the end of the month. God. Not even a month. Yes, oh. Even with a high paying, uh, with even a high paying job, we wouldn't be able to work the number of hours needed to make 100,000 gold in a month. No, I said, I know we said we'd never do this, but how much do you think we'd get for Hootsie? (laughs) Oh, do you think how much people would pay to see Hootsie uh, do a very nice and stylish jig? Probably a lot. Look, kid, I know that we said we would never talk about it in public. (laughs) But we should discuss that option at this point. Um, Well, you know what? Perhaps... uh, 
Maybe I could talk to Pierre. He might know an exotic uh, monster dealer that would... Anyway, I mean, I think regardless, if we're all working, then we're splitting it up. You know, it's 25,000 gold pieces each. Mm. Um, and again, that's still quite a lot of gold pieces. There's also no running. How did he know all of the things that we've done over the many years that you've done? You know, that's kind of complicated. Um, when you're dealing with the sort of voodoo that I am, never really get much privacy, so I'm guessing, you know, he gets his powers from the same generous bearer that I do. Uh, oh! Maybe he Can we, oh, just oh. worked it out. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna be very proud of me, Premi. Uh, if the Baron is very generous, what if we ask for a small loan of a hundred thousand gold pieces? <laughs> you know, Grico, that's a real nice thought. Now, you know what? I'm gonna try it. I'll send him a message. You know, I'll, I'll send him send him a letter right now. Oh, and, great! Uh, you know, maybe he'll get back to us. But in the meantime, we should probably, you know. Try to earn the gold another way, because I don't have a whole lot of faith in that. Hedge our bets. Exactly. Not a fucking chance. Let me tell you. I'd just be dead. He just like slooped my soul right out of my eyeball or something. <sighs> oh, Jesus. I thought of a few options. Oh. We can find a valuable item that we'd be able to sell for more than 100000 and steal it. We can perform a heist. <laughs> Frosty, are you advocating stealing? Now you're talking. Or perhaps we could, uh, one of us might be able to marry rich and we'd be able to pay off the debt in that way. Well, I wouldn't mind that. Look, I, mean, I don't know if I'm ready for marriage, Frosty. Yeah, well, I you, mean, I've got so much going on. You with might have team. to take one for the team. <laughs> oh. Oh, gosh. I never, I, I, I didn't know it'd be so soon. <laughs> uh, are there are there rich goblin nobles in Nagwe? I haven't been able to explore the city much. Uh, you know, now that I think about it, there may be one or two. But I mean, look, the there aren't really nobles in Nagwe. They're sort of like an aristocracy, a bunch of rich folk well, down in the Magnolia Promenade. But it's not like we just walk up and steal one item. We walk up and get hitched in a day, and they just fork over the gold. Well, we've got a month to woo uh, a potential uh, uh, sutress. What is the word I'm thinking of? D- Duchess? Woman? Yeah, woman. <laughs> <laughs> A foreign concept. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I kind of like where his head's at. We don't even need him to marry her. We just need him to distract her. Maybe we break in. We we hit a door or two. We... No, no, no. He, look, this is what I'm trying to say. That unless we're stealing the full net worth of these people, there are two men in Agwe that have something that we could steal. No, oh. one item and probably sell it for a hundred thousand gold pieces. And that's Mr. Remy Garou, Mr. Alphonse LeBlanc. Hmm. And I would never dare to fuck with you. You understand? Mr. Garou, I've already mentioned Mr. Alphonse LeBlanc. I haven't seen him out in the sunlight in the last <laughs> in the last however many years. Hmm. Yeah, it's a recluse. Are you ready? <laughs> exactly. So he's just oh, he's always home. It's hard to kind of p- pull up a house. He's always a homebody. Exactly. I'll see. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Giddy, giddy, the fire rises in your blood on account of you being in the, in the free yeah. blood. Fire rises. Yes, yeah, the fire rises. Uh, okay. So what? So okay. I need you all to roll a perception check. Oh no. Oh. Pierre, how could you? Oh my God! This is warm it up. Warm it up. Warm it up. Warm it up. Natural twenty. Oh, yeah. oh here we go. Here we go. I put it in my roll a d100 Legends for me. Legends of Adventures dice thing. Okay. Roll, roll a d100 for me. Can do, can do. <laughs> this one. and a ten. Right? No way. Are no you way. fucking kidding me? Uh, thank you, Nilesh, for the follow. Yes, thank Nilesh. you. And it's good to see you, Arky. Hello. Oh, hey, Arky. Good to see you. No way. The first two rolls are a twenty and a one. Well, huh? wait. Um, is it, this is a one hundred. This is a game of extremes. Yeah. Accurate. Yeah, that's correct. 35. All right, you're good. Uh, 18 for Gregor. I was going to see, but that is a, that's an 11. 
uh, Gricko and Gideon. <clears throat> you, as you're having this conversation, you begin to notice uh, bits of movement. Uh, you're actually alerted by the sound first. The uh, the guttural croaking sounds as you realize that you are being watched by at least four grinning sinners that are placed randomly around the Crossroads Tavern. Hey, do you hear that? Oh. It would. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, some of our friends from the uh, from the, the riverboat are, are, are coming and, and they're here too. What are the chances of that? Are they bullywugs? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I they're, they're off, off think, off think that one... Uh, uh, that was uh, Gaston. That one was uh, P- o- Other Pierre. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you know. Yeah, the Grand Sinners are here. Oh, God, Master you stay. Oh. oh, no. I'm glad you told me. I was about to suggest we kill Remy. <laughs> <laughs> we killed the guru. <laughs> I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. You don't have to. I didn't. <laughs> oh, good. Look, we should get the fuck out of here, is all I'm saying. No more discussing any business, all right? Nope. Oh. We're gonna, we just, I guess, this breakfast alone's gonna cost us go two, two gold pieces. Already paid for it. Oh, we already paid for it. Never mind. I gotta, been, let's get the fuck out of oh, here. Oh, we got Hootsie's still sleeping. Hootsie's right next to you. Oh, Hootsie's right here. Let's go. <laughs> oh, Hootsie. She was doing a jig earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, your stylist jig was very nice. Would you like another Hootsie snack? The people threw money. Oh no, these are buttons. That's weird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can add them to like a little vest or hat. Here we go. Oh, you're so cute. Well, let's all go and to the bank where we have one hundred thousand gold pieces, and that is where we will head. Oh, to the bank. Wait, Frosty. You have a bank account of a hundred thousand gold pieces? No, just, 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 and as you yell this, the in- there, a hush goes <laughs> over the entire tavern as everybody turns and looks. Uh, you gotta go and right now. Did you hear that? They have a bank with a hundred thousand gold pieces. Look, we're in the crowd ad quarter. You know what that means, right? Any, all these people, they all have a big, probably ten inch long hunting knife. In, 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 in a left coat pocket, and they would not hesitate to stab you in the kidney and steal all, every all two gold pieces. But I'd rather keep my kidney. kidney. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes, let's all try to keep our kidneys. Uh, I stand up, and I sort of brush off my jacket, and I put my hat on. <clears throat> Gentlemen, shall we? I brush off my vest and put all my hat on as well. I will pull my hood up, and I will stand like this and look really badass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I stand up super tall, flex back a little bit, and let the chain slam wildly on the floor. <laughs> oh, did you get enough to eat, Hootsie? You want me to get a little bit more? Just, you know, we don't know the next time we're going to stop. And perhaps there will be rats on the way. <laughs> yeah, get some <laughs> rats. <laughs> scampers across the ground by your feet. <laughs> I'll crush it. Crush <laughs> <laughs> it, do that thing, do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I cast Mind Slipper on the rat. <laughs> <laughs> the rat dies! Firstly, the rat's gonna... eyes go... <laughs> you know... <laughs> um, you're gonna make Hoochie terrible at catching rats if you keep doing it, but I always like watching oh, it. Oh no, tough love, I understand. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you gotta get it. Oh, Hoochie! Oh, come on! Uh, come yeah, on yeah, there he goes! Oh, ah. oh, good job, Oh, you're so good, you're so good at catching All rats, right. Max. Okay. I'm already happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking over my shoulder. Oh. oh gosh, isn't she the most wonderful thing you've ever seen? Okay, okay. Goodbye, goodbye, P- other Pierre. Goodbye, Justin. <coughs> and you make your way <laughs> out way into out. the Crawdad Quarter. Um, the sound of the tavern was was quite loud, uh, even for this early morning hour. Um, and as you make your way outside, though the town square that you're in here is bustling, it is quieter than it was inside. And you look around, you see uh, different markets and food stalls, restaurants, even another tavern further down the way. Um, and in the very center of the square, you see that faded thing, the job board. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Well, I guess I mean, it doesn't hurt to at least look. See, you know, maybe we can make a quick 100 gold pieces, you know, start to put a dent in it. Oh, I thought you were kidding about the job board. <laughs> I wish I wasn't. Uh, perhaps there will be a extremely lucrative but difficult and dangerous uh, a task for us, and we can 
handle it together. Man, I wish we had the rest of the, the crew with us. We'd be able to figure it out together. Oh, like all the Connies and various acts that yeah. I had to let go? Oh, yeah, they probably wouldn't care. If, yeah, they <laughs> You never paid. Care. This is the crew. <laughs> We're the crew now. This yeah. is all, it's just us. It's going to be fine. We had to shut up the carnival and, you know, we would run out of town because I wrote so many IOUs. <laughs> I should have trusted that accountant. Now, if you look at the letter, did you did you get charged for the IOUs or just actual money spent? Oh, you know what? That's a good question. Let because perhaps we can reduce the amount if they were IOUs and you never were beholden to the amounts that you were paying. No, or... no, he's got the IOUs. <laughs> <there>. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It was worth asking. I approach the job board and scan <laughs> whether or not I'm going to be a barmaid or not. <laughs> sure, you, you make your way up to the job board and you can see that there are significant um, advertisements that have been left here for a long time. Uh, you see one, it's a missing cat, Calico, mm. uh, please return to uh, Francine. Um, and the reward? Five silver pieces. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you see an advertisement for Bayou Brass Bar and Music Shop. Mm -hmm. They are looking. They're looking for a musical act. Ten gold pieces a night. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Guaranteed tips. Well, we only have to do that for ten thousand nights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that can't be, how long is that? <laughs> ten thousand nights. <laughs> Thirty years. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> That's, that's definitely after the end of the month. Uh, well, perhaps if we were Shahrazad. Uh, you see that uh, Cousin Louise is looking for um, a bellhop. Uh, the pay is five gold pieces a day. That's half as good. Uh, you see that Rich Boy Po Boy, the new sandwich shop down the way that you've heard is delicious, mm. is looking for a line chef. Um, and that's also five gold pieces a day. Damn. Oh, you know, my Meemaw said that place was pretty good. I mean, we do have two gold pieces, and po' boys are delicious. <laughs> I mean, we just ate, though. I'm a little full. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it does mention that uh, meals are free, that you get a free meal um, with every chef. Hey, do we want to be po' boy chefs for the rest of our <laughs> lives, fellas? But together? Well, there's only two problems with that for me. Is I'd eat everything there is, and I don't know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know how to cook, but I promised myself I'd never go back to that professionally. Mm. You may have no choice. In 30 days, you might be... Whatever Remy will do to us. What, what do you think he's actually going to... It's uh, less than 30 days. It is the 7th of the month. Oh. So we got three weeks. Well, what will he do to you? And I guess us by proxy? <laughs> uh, you know, it's hard to say, but... Some combination of... Uh... I guess the end result's all the same. Uh, we no longer be living. Uh, and whatever awaits us in uh, the thereafter mm. wouldn't be uh, too pleasant. I hope. Well, what the hell are we even doing at this damn board? There's nothing we're going to do in three weeks that is going to give us 100,000 gold pieces and keep our souls firmly not sucked <laughs> directly through our fucking eye sockets. <laughs> well, uh, you know. You can do that. Can you do that? Um, Maybe. Yeah, you can pretty much do that. Ah! Yeah. yeah. Ah! Okay. I've seen some. It's like basically you, you, you look at some of the fellas after he's done with them. They look, they look like uh, empty Capri Suns. It's not. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they look like that chick in the closet at the beginning of the movie, The Ring. Exactly right. <laughs> That's called a major image in Agua. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, just withered away. Hmm. I had an idea. Some, I think I heard someone said, I, I never uh, never went to business school, but you got to spend money to make money. Unfortunately, we don't have the money to spend. No, but we have two gold pieces. What about that fella that's selling soap with a prize inside? Mm -hmm. What if we give him two gold pieces worth of soap and maybe one of them has 100,000 gold pieces in it? <laughs> You know what's funny? For selling, for his whole thing being selling soap, he doesn't really smell like, it doesn't smell appropriate for that. <laughs> Maybe we don't take ideas from the guy that doesn't know how to play poker and eats his cigars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it looked like well, a cannoli. 
Yes, I remember you saying that. <laughs> that was too slow, Grico. I'm sorry. I will show you how to smoke cigars and play poker one day. If we survive this. No, there's always you? smoke to pipe, but this is just very easy, simple. Mm. I'm going to continue to scan the job board. Is there anything that looks like a, maybe maybe something without a roll price a, on it? Roll an investigation check. Is there anything bordered in gold with an exclamation mark over it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, this is spelled. Oh, no, that doesn't around. patch in into... Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my natural one dice. Let's find out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to switch over no. just because it gave me a bad yeah, roll. Yeah, you got us. There it is. Uh, let's say hello to a. <coughs> what's seventeen plus sixteen or seven plus sixteen? Uh, plus fucking twenty three. I'm I'm smart. I'm Frost. I'm an in base character. <laughs> uh, you you look back at the job board and those are the newest um, postings. Everything else looks significantly older, and your your mind goes back to that cat. Like, it's not that much, but that that poor girl is missing her cat. You could at least take that sign, and if you happen to see the calico cat while you're about, and you pull it off of the job board, and you see a sign beneath it. Who? Lost Warlock Patron. Madrick Madric Rosloff's Archfey Warlock Guild. My warlock patron Zabilna has been lost to me for some time now. I am seeking out an adventuring party willing to travel into Prismere and uncover her whereabouts. I can offer grand rewards. Meet me at the giant pumpkin patch to the south of town if interested in this quest. The sign looks a bit older. Uh, it clearly hasn't gotten any attention or love, but you can tell uh, by looking at it, there is there are dates marked into the side of it. Um, with a little note that says still seeking. And you see that it was updated just three days prior. Well, take a, take a look at both of these job offer offerings. <laughs> I'm gonna propose that we pursue the cat option. <laughs> <laughs> For five silver gold pieces. Yes, because pieces. cat owners, they tend to be shifty and maybe we can find something in her mattress, for example. No, you know, I actually, you know what? <laughs> The Lost Warlock patron is intriguing, but there's no actual amount on here. We have no way of knowing. We could, we, we, we could be wasting time. There's a whole guild of warlocks? Oh, Archfey warlocks. All right, so more a different persuasion than I am. Oh, what does it say? How much does it pay? It, it doesn't say it. Just, I mean, I, Frost just said that is so. You know, how what, much do you think grand riches is? Eh? With our luck, it's going to be ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-seven gold pieces. <laughs> but then we just have to rescue two or three cats, and we'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this first, and then we can. There's fucking cats everywhere. No, I'm doing one thing. I'm doing one thing. I have to rescue this patron. I'm not saving the cat. I mean, look, it says grand reward, and you, I mean, guilds always have tons. You know, you know how, many, how much dues cost to be in a guild? It's it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm, you know, even if we can find where this guild is and rob them, now that's an idea. I don't know if we should. Rob from anyone who calls themselves a warlock. <laughs> Perhaps if they call themselves peace locks. <laughs> Easy as shit. I mean, well, well, there, there's even a skull on it. Does that spook you too, Frost? Oh, it's inside of a scroll. <laughs> oh. Are you a warlock, Remy? I mean, yeah. Can you say, oh, hey, fella, how can you do, fellow warlock? What I will say is looking at it, <laughs> it, it makes you think of when your grandparents needed to make uh, some kind of digital image and they used a lot of those uh, clip art. Oh, like you just used, this is just Microsoft Word clip art. <laughs> hey, Kevin, help me with the computer here. I gotta find my warlock page. <laughs> <laughs> Never let us talk for more than five minutes. 
get the fuck over here, Kevin. I mean, yeah, oh. I'm a warlock, but look, if you read, it's an Archvay warlock. That's a totally different kind of warlock than what I am. Well, well now, now here's the other thing. Because Clippy, I hear you need some help finding your cake. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. How do I turn this off? This is horseshit. Don't look at me with those eyes. <laughs> oh. Um, now, I, I think you're on to something, Grimmie. Oh, boy. If they're missing their patron, what else are they missing? I mean, that's a, <coughs> that's a good point. I mean, regardless, it, the, grand, great reward is definitely a lot better than five silver pieces. I imagine at least that. three, four, hopefully five digits. That'll get us very close very quickly, and then perhaps we can spend money to make money. This would take us uh, the shortcut. Well, I know what I know where the yeah. pumpkin patch is south of town. I, I, I know where you know that big old pumpkin patch is south of town. I would say you <clears throat> you've even heard that name whispered about, um, and uh, I will say just for the sake of ease, uh, you are familiar with the name, and that this person, this man, has been around Ogway for a long time, and he's an older guy and that he is rumored to have quite a lot of money. Uh, the house he lives in is fairly nice considering its placement out towards the swamp. Um, <clears throat> but he, he does live a secluded life. He's got a lot of land though. Um, and you, uh, it is, uh, he's been known to, uh, swim in the same circles as some of the upper crusts. I have, a, I have a question about Frost knowledge. Sure. <clears throat> Does Frost know what an archfey is? Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. something that's generally known. And my second question, and how big exactly are these pumpkins? <clears throat> They're about... Oh, I don't know, pumpkin size. I don't know, like well, three feet tall and about one and a half feet yeah, wide. Yeah, about, about like three feet wide. That doesn't seem large tall. to me for a pumpkin. Three feet? Three feet? No. If you if you think of, uh, I've seen giant pumpkins uh, six, seven feet long. Greek was three feet. Yeah, I know how long three feet is. <laughs> Have you in in I, IRL giant pumpkins at three feet would not be would no, not be that big. They're like here is his pumpkin patch with his giant pumpkin. Oh, patch. Okay, so yeah. that's a house. Yeah. That's like 15 to 20 feet across. No, yeah, they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, was, I was just Willy with thank you nose. I was just giving you the dimensions of Willy Worm. I you're, heard that and I had decided to ignore it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Your intelligence is getting in the way, Frost. You're taking this too literally. It's just meet me at the giant pumpkin patch. It's not a pumpkin patch full of giant pumpkins. It's a really big pumpkin patch. Oh, so the full pumpkin. Of regular the, size the pumpkins. Pu really? Well, I'm presuming. Well, isn't it three giants? That makes me less curious, but let's go anyway and investigate. Wait, now that I look at it, Madrick. Oh, this must be Steve Madrick. I think I know this guy. Oh, wait, Madrick Rosloff. Steve Madrick Rosloff. I hope. I, I apparently know him. Madrick Rosloff? Yeah, he's an older guy. He's He's been around Ogway. And he's got to be up there in years. I didn't. I wonder how he's doing. Is it one of those things where, like, warlocks generally <clears throat> know each other? I mean, you know, I don't know if everyone knows he's a warlock. Would I know that he was a warlock? Um, no, probably not. But well, it's, I mean, now I know he's a warlock. it's very clear that this was an old man that wrote that. Um, look, either way, I know what this is. Let's go pay old Madrick a visit. Yes. Well, I mean, I feel like even if he can't, even if he means like, I will offer you the grand reward of friendship. We should still do it, because if I lost my primal spirits, I would be so sad. Grigal, if we accept friendship and we do something for a week, and then you're killed horribly two weeks later, <laughs> are you going to feel very good about that friendship, or would you prefer the gold? Both. Let's discuss this as we make our way. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I will start to lead the, the gang south, uh, wherever I think this would be. Okay, and you're just heading straight through town and then cutting over? Hmm. Hold on, fellas. Give me one second. I want to kind of, like, 
sort of nonchalantly as I can, despite being on like a purple like tuxedo. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of, like look around and see if I can notice any bullywugs. Like <clears throat> roll a perception check at advantage <gasps> because you know what you're looking for. You did steal her dice. Uh, <laughs> he did, yeah. That's an eight. Uh, no, sorry, that's a 16. Okay, yeah. Looking around, you see that there are quite a few <clears throat> grinning sinners um, skulking in the shadows, um, essentially keeping an eye on you. All right. Um, I don't think we should go through town. Nope. Um, we're already in the crawl ad quarter. Uh, I think we just slip into the swamp. And we go around. How does that sound? Is there anything else we can do to get them off our trail? What do you mean? A distraction, perhaps. Uh, if you have any abilities magically, I'm, 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 I'm in agreement that we should try to lose them. Well, I'm not sure that they're going to follow us into the swamp. They can't be inconspicuous, and... Frankly, I don't really know what they intend to do with us, but I don't like how we're being watched right now. Yeah, I guess you're right. Once we get into the swamp, those frog fellas will be totally out of their element. <laughs> What's the name of uh, one of the other quarters in... Magnolia yeah. uh, Promenade. Promenade. Yes, we will go to the Magnolia Promenade and find this calico cat. Oh, That's yeah. a great idea, Frost, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to try the soup in the bread bowl at that, uh, that one place. That sounds delicious. We can do that because we have the money. Oh, we picked the cat. What a fucking waste. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me, Gideon. Let's go this way. What to do, friends? Ugh. Roll a deception at advantage because your friends are helping you. Hold on. Wait a minute. Isn't the Magnolia Promenade down that way? <laughs> So just regular style. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a natural 20. Oh! Roll a d100 for me, please. Oh, oh my goodness. Baby. 30. Okay. Oh, no. 83. Sorry. No, oh, you're good. Um, that, So that's a 27. Mm hmm for my deception. You, um, you keep your eye out and you notice that as you're saying this, they begin to move before you do. Um, hearing that that's where you're going, they make their way towards the Magnolia Promenade uh, preemptively, uh, which gives you enough time to sneak into the shadows and head in a different direction. Yeah, so like right before we're about to leave the Crawdad Quarter, I would like try to look for like an alley between like, the two like shanty. Buildings. You know this town well enough that you're easily able to find a way. And I'll say with that, um, the help from your friends, you're able to uh, dart down an alleyway and take these um, <laughs> back areas through the Crawdad Quarter until you step out into the swamp. And once you get to the swamp, it is very clear that Kremi knows this area like the back of his hand as he begins to lead you um, through a maze of cypress trees. Um, you're about calf deep in muck as you wade through the swamp Grico even higher on your short stature um, but you are able to wind your way through the uh, through the muck and the mire as you make your way towards uh, Madrick Rosloff's place and for the sake of brevity it takes you a good two and a half almost three hours um, from when you leave to when you're able to make it to his place, just because it is difficult terrain, as it were. Um, but you are finally able to pull yourselves out of the swamp as you make your way through um, a forested area, and eventually to a cute little uh, a cute little patch that is contrary to what Kremi said, a giant pumpkin patch. Oh, you know, there are clear. about 25 giant <laughs> pumpkins, some of them ranging 20, would that be accurate? About 20, 20 feet? feet? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, about 20 feet. Uh, uh, like from here to the ceiling is like 10, 12 feet, right? Yeah, so. Okay, so like 10, 
16 feet. Big as this room. They're huge. They're gigantic. Some of them look like um, it makes the house look almost dwarfed in comparison. Um, The house (laughs) is very quaint, but it is well kept. It's a thatched roof house. Um, You can see um, you can see smoke uh, billowing up from the chimney. There is clearly someone inside, and the smell is uh, the smell is comforting. It smells like fresh baked pumpkin pie. Mm. Oh. Oh, I love pumpkin pie. Look at the size of these pumpkins. You undersold this. I, well, I, you know, <laughs> last time I was here it was a, a long time ago, and they were all just regular sized pumpkins. Maybe these are the same pumpkins they've been growing this whole time. That's yeah. probably exactly right. I wonder uh, what he has in his. What is he? What is he watering them with? I haven't seen pumpkins this big since that waitress before Miss Dallery's <laughs> university. <laughs> oh, is that any window, Gideon? Did she have? <laughs> she did she have a pumpkin patch? Yeah. Yes, she did. I, I do recall she had red hair. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> let's keep up our manners for Mr. Rosloff. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get a sense of what kind of reward this is. Yes. I'll mind his delicate fucking sensibilities. <laughs> I think we all will. Grammy, you do the talking. <clears throat> All right, just follow my lead. Oh, oh well. Oh, 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 oh. Is there a chance you can get a free slosh of paw for each of us thrown in? I would love that. There. Oh, and one for Uchi. We're all gonna go in if he invites us. No, in. I'm just I'm saying because you're doing the talking. I'm just saying if he offers us a slice of pie, but then is like, well, it's gonna be one gold less, and we only get ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety eight gold pieces. I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the pie is worth it if it tastes as good as it smells. And you be on your best behavior, Hootsie. Remember the manners I taught you. Especially for an old man. Speak up. And only speak when spoken to. That's how old people like children to be. Rico, we're not going to die for pie. <laughs> You're right. Okay, crummy, do the talking. All right, well, uh, <clears throat> uh, so I will clear my throat, <clears throat> and I will um, take my cane, and I will rap on the door three times with my cane. You rap on the door and you wait and you hear shuffling around inside. You hear the clanging of pots and movement, but no one comes to the door. You wait a little bit longer and you rap on the door and you, you hear something knocked off of a table and some loud shuffling. No one comes to the door. Finally, you rap a little bit louder and then you hear from inside, Oh, someone's at the door! <laughs> as all of a sudden, you can hear loud clanging as pots and pans are knocked this way and that. The door opens, and you see a wizened old man in a black cloak, uh, a long, uh, very tailored, nice black top with a uh, black embroidery on it, some billowy pants, and some house slippers. Flitting around his, his head are two uh, what appear to be pixies. Uh, one with uh, beautiful blonde hair in shades of purple, the other one in shades of green with bright fiery red hair. Um, His hair is very long down to his back and completely white. Uh, His eyebrows are incredibly bushy and a piercing, almost frosty blue eyes. His face alights in a smile and you see a small tattoo right above his right eyebrow in the shape of a chicken foot. He looks out at all of you. Oh, welcome to Madrick Ro- <laughs> Roslov's uh, house of uh, mm, shh, no. Mm, shh. He's motioning to the pixie with the red hair. Stop talking to me when I have guests. What a deal. No, it's, 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 are we in are we in operating hours right now? No wait. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Grumpy, you sure this is the fucking guy? <laughs> Welcome okay. to Patrick Russell's warlock killed! Okay, it sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> Madrick, what to do? How can I help you? Do you remember me? 
I have never met you, son! <laughs> no. The name is Magic Rosloff! No, and he reaches no, his hand met. out to shake it. I have not met you, sir! The name's Kramer LaCrue. You don't remember me? Never heard it a day in my life! Remember when you were a regular Krusty Dicks in the Crawdack Order? I was a cook back in the day. I've never eaten Krusty Dicks a day in my life! No, you definitely got crabs and Krusty Dicks. <laughs> I don't even like crab! <laughs> Well, uh, then, you know what? You, you, you probably have early onset dementia. <laughs> <laughs> you look how young and spry you are. What's that an insult? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't an insult, she says. Uh, well, um, it's great to see you again. You're looking... Well, Sprightly! Uh, that's right. Um, it's probably been quite a few years. Where are my glasses? <laughs> well, I, I can't help you with that. I don't know where your glasses, glasses are. <laughs> Is that not them right on his head? And you watch as the pixies <laughs> fly behind him, and they, they look around, but you are right. They have fallen back behind his head, and as they fly up, they move them over, and, oh, now I can see you. Oh, yep, never met you. Well, All right. well, Mr. Rob. No, go, come in, come in. My my pie is burning. And he shuffles into his house really quickly, and you can see that there is a bit of a smell. The pie does sound like, or smell like it's starting to burn, um, but he's able to get it out of the oven before it fully catches fire. It's probably on account of the crabs from Krusty Dicks. <laughs> Rico, I think it's time for you to start facing your own mortality. And I, 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 I lay him in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who she wasn't on that contract, was it? Was she? Yes, she was. Oh! An owlbear named Hootsie. That's oh, at the sure. very bottom. Let's go, Virgo. I'm serious. Um, he, as he's shuffling about, he tells you to follow the pixies, that they will um, they will lead you to the sitting room. And you are, you're, you make your way through this very cozy, uh, very comfortable little cottage into a nice sitting room. The walls are lined with bookshelves, old tomes. You can see a large, uh, what appears to be a... Uh, an ancient oak tree, but it's shrunk down to a smaller size that's perched into the corner, almost the way that you would put a cat tower, but this clearly is a pixie tower, as there are two tiny houses on it, <laughs> as the pixies fly into their little homes and they begin to drink their tea. Neither one of them seems to be speaking verbally, but Madrick understands what they're trying to communicate to him, um, and they seem very fond of him, um, but they they both have cute little porches attached to their little homes, and they sit out there drinking tea watching you. Does it seem like there's a back and forth or does it, it seem seems like, like Madrick is thinks he's understanding <laughs> what they're saying? Yes. The pixies, <laughs> however, do seem to be communicating very well with each other and you can hear a <laughs> very high-pitched uh, grumbling noises, but you can't make out what the words are. Um, and you see that there are some plush couches with some uh, crocheted blankets made of a mishmash of different colored yarns. Uh, big pillows with uh, embroidery of different cats and dogs and things on them, all with different names. Uh, Sparklebutt is the name of one of the dogs. Mm -hmm. It's a dachshund. Uh, well, do you mind? And I gesture at the couch. Yes, please take a seat. Ah, I'll sit down. Would anyone like a slice of pie? We would all love one, please, and what? one for Lutzi as well. Is pie free? Yeah, I offered it, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, please. This isn't a cafe. <laughs> oh. Would just anyone like to- They said you were going to charge us. Speaking right. of a cafe, would anyone like a cup of coffee? Ooh. I'll have a cup. I'd be I'll happy to cup with the pie. Yes, well, would anyone want to help me? I'll help you. I can't carry all these slices of pie and a bunch of cups of coffee on my own. Oh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll help you. We're very oh, helpful okay. folk. Well, then don't sit down. Come with oh. me to the kitchen. Oh, okay. I'll take my hat off. And sit Who down. should you make yourself <sighs> behave? Behave, you're in a, a very kind There's person's place. a small place. dog bed that she curls up on. She oh. is clearly way too big for it, but she Oh, uh, you lays fit down just nicely, perfectly there. Oh. Okay. All right, Gid, what's the rub? What do we think? And I want to start scanning the room to see, like, does anything look valuable that we could potentially steal? Uh, roll an investigation check. Um, and you make your way in, and he quickly shows you where the where the mugs are. They all have these strange, um, like, 
quirky sayings on them, like almost dad joke style sayings. Um, he's got a shelf full of mugs with uh, different names of places he's visited around uh, Avantris. Um, the the uh, the apron he's wearing says uh, "Kiss the Cook." Uh, and he's got Are there carved wooden letters on the wall that say "Live, Laugh, Love." Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. this mug says "Over the Hill." Okay. <laughs> it's right next Mine. to the other one that says "Over the Hill." He's got like five or six yeah, of those yeah. ones. Mine has a cartoon cat <clears throat> comic on the side. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's essentially what it looks like. He seems quite uh, grumpy. He pulls out a. Um, you see that the burnt pie is off to the side, and he's actually cutting slices from. A perfectly, um, perfectly cooked pumpkin pie. He um, takes out some homemade whipping cream and tops them. Sprinkles a little bit of cinnamon mm. on the top and a dollop of iced cream, or iced custard uh, mm. that he places on the side with some fresh chopped um, candied pumpkin bits. Oh my gosh! And he hands you <clears throat> a bunch of these plates and has you bring them in as he brings his uh, pumpkin spice coffee. Mr. Rossloff, is, uh, are, 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 is this pie made from pumpkins from the size of the pumpkins you have outside? Yes! Are, are the seeds all lots of little tiny seeds on the inside, or are they, are they similarly large, like a, like a basketball? Yes! You've been, oh. most, you've been most informative. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very informative. Oh, d- tell us more. How did you? Uh, and I'm like trying to like make conversation with them. I'm so glad that you could make it. And he's he's talking to you as you're helping him uh, set everything. I'm up. looking around to see if there are like dried pumpkin seeds the size of like tennis rackets anywhere. <laughs> there definitely are. Okay, I'm happy. I lean into Crummy while everyone's in the kitchen and I say. I don't know how you feel about this guy, but he's about two cogs short of an engine that only has two cogs. <laughs> well, exactly right. And if this guy has dealings with the Fae, he might have a lot of gold stashed someplace, but I've also heard, you know, they're pretty tricksy too, so you just ought to be careful. Well, you see anything that looks like grand, grand, what was that, what was that word, grandeur? Treasure, maybe? Oh, it was, uh, let me just, uh, grand rewards right here, see? Uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't. I see. What was your pop- investigation? Oh, four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. You look around and you see you see a bunch of fairy tales, um, some old books that look like maybe for the to to the right person they might be worth something, but definitely not a hundred thousand gold pieces. Uh, you see a lot of photos of Magic spanning the years of his life, um, going on adventures. You see uh, photos of him with what looks to be a, a set group of friends that he used to travel with a lot. Um, oh. There's a cuckoo clock hanging above the wall, a uh, macrame uh, wall hanging that looks really old, um, a couple of baskets of yarn. He clearly enjoys yarn work. An old rocking chair. All right, you know, I think based on what I see, I think we play this straight. I think we see what the job is, and if we can find this as a deal now, uh, and we really got a grand reward, you know, I think... It's worth a shot. Let's not blow our chances by getting sticky fingers, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should ask to see a, a piece of what the reward looks like, because I got a feeling this is one of them types of situations where the grand reward is the friends you made along the way. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Maybe that's why it's not being specific. Maybe he considers his pumpkin pie a grand reward. Wow. And we go through all this effort and finds a bill now, and he's like, well, you get two pies to go, <laughs> and that's it. What a travesty. Well, I mean, it does sound pretty good, but... Oh, look, I, you know, whatever it is, I'll try to get it in writing. We got your pie. Oh, 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 got you extra oh, whipped what cream and tea. Oh, my, my name is Morning Frost. You can Frost, call me Frost. Does your green child need a booster seat? <laughs> my green child. Yes. <laughs> Yes, the green child with the very large dog. Oh, you mean Grico. <laughs> that took some time for me. I'm really quite smart. That's remarkable. You named your child Grico Fro- Grico Morning? No, 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 no. This is actually a goblin. It, it, it's an adult man. <laughs> this is an adult man that you're looking at. 
<laughs> You're looking at an adult man gobbler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll be damned! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm actually a father. I'm actually the oldest of the group. <laughs> oh, I was wondering why your voice was so low compared to most children. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my question still stands. Do you need a booster seat? <laughs> no, I'll go. I mean, no, you don't have to. No, I'll, I'll make do. I just want to make sure you're comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate your consideration, Mr. Rosloff. You're coloring. very nice. Thanks. I have a coloring page and some crowns if you want to color oh, more. Oh, here. yeah, I won't say no to that. All right. And he goes over oh, to the Oh, is there side. a little maze? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can make sure I get one if you want. Okay, I'm finally going to get it this time. And he brings you a coloring book called um, The Sleeping Queen, and he places it down in front of you, and it has all these beautiful... Um, images in it that clearly have never been colored and a pack of crayons that is has never been touched <clears throat> these, these are wax um <laughs> wax coloring devices in case you're not familiar with crayons oh what is the chef crayon uh, have today <laughs> tom, tom has spent 27 dollars on a sandwich <laughs> Yes, but the straws are huge. <laughs> Why do they get, do they get those pink straws? Have you seen the size of the straws? But yes, at the back there is very clearly a hedge maze that you can work your way through and an incredibly easy cro- crossword puzzle. <sighs> Well, I mean, uh, if, unless we think it's rude, I think I might take a crack at this. <laughs> oh, we're jumble. Oh, Chair, yeah. oh. Four, <laughs> mouse, cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the diagonal's tricky. You, you'll get that one soon. <laughs> <laughs> You always do this first thing. <laughs> oh, 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 and he pours the coffee and passes it to each of you. It smells very pleasant here. Thank you so much for coming to visit old Madrick. Oh, I haven't had visitors in such a long time. What brings you this way? Well, uh, we swung by the job. <laughs> job board this morning. <clears throat> You done? <sighs> you alright? You feel I mean you Alright. Um <clears throat> we swung by the job board this morning and uh we noticed this. You found my Oh I put that I made that by myself! <laughs> Oh, it's very nice. Yeah. I didn't even know there was an Archfey Warlock here. I, I spent 35 gold pieces on all those little the, the, the images and stuff on there. I had an artist draw the whole, the whole thing up for me. 35. <clears throat> yeah. Well, maybe we just go into sign making. <laughs> well, what did the answer? I was a very so. talented lad. Um. Well, <laughs> we wanted to know. So it seems like you've you've lost your 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 your, your patron. Yeah, it's been a while since we've been in contact. How long has it been, Fran? Fifteen years. Years? I I know I look young for my age. You do. Fifteen years is a long time to anyone. It is, yes. Uh, Do you still have your your, your, your powers? Oh, of course, of course. Old Madrick here. Strong like ox. Well, that's good. I'm glad that they weren't like stripped away in some kind of old oh. fashion. Um, we used to communicate often, and I just I'm worried something's happened to her. Well, the four of us are quite capable, um, and we would love to help you get in contact with Zabilna. If that's how you say it. Mm-hmm. You are very large! Well, thank you for noticing. (laughs) You're welcome. You are very, very smart. Well, thank you for noticing. You're welcome. You are a great liar. Thank you for noticing. I like you a lot. 
Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. No, no, I'm blushing. <laughs> Do you think you're capable of handling something like this? It requires going into the Feywild, a place that even the strongest of them can't survive. I understood that we were going to a place called the Prismere. Yes. I was hoping that we were going to be looking for a cat, given the name. Why? Why? Well, because it's not important. The Prismere that you're asking us to go to. Is that in this Feywild? It is a, it is a, a domain of the Feywild that is oh. the domain that Sibilna rules over. In the Feywild? Yes, she is the, the queen of the Palace of Heart's Desire. She's a, a, like a fairy godmother of sorts. Mm, okay. She's kind and Gentle, she uh, she is sorely missed. Well, um, <clears throat> it def- definitely sounds interesting, and uh, I mean, I've heard of the Feywild. I've never been. Um, would you know how to get us there, or could you at least, you know, point us in the right direction mm-hmm. if we were to, you know, Frost. take on this task? Frost, have you ever been to the Feywild? I've never been to the Feywild. I, I actually, okay. uh, there, there are many planar locations which I'd like to journey. I've never been to the Feywild either. Have you ever been, Gideon? Don't look at me. I've never been to the fucking Feywild, I don't think. <laughs> I think Pucci, I've been... have you ever been to the Feywild? Once or twice. <laughs> oh, you're being a little coy. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um... <clears throat> So, would you be able to help us get there? Actually, as, as fate would have it, the Witchlight Carnival is in town. The what? Hi. The, the carnival. The, the Witchlight Carnival. It was created by Zabilna as a way for mortals to enter Prismere if they wanted to beseech her for her help. Hmm. Has it already been eight years? Who's the ever? Oh, we've been together for eight years. Wait, does that when does it come? It's it's been here for five days. There's a carnival here in Agway. It has three more days left. Well, it's it's out of town. Oh my gosh, it's almost your birthday, Hootsie. Oh, we have to have the greatest party. Three more days, you say? Yes, and it's about a three. Day travel to get there, so you'd have to leave soon. Three, uh, three, three. Hmm. There's a little bit of a problem. Uh, Do you know about this? Yeah, no, I used to work at the the the. the oh, like, that's great. I mean, it was just a very it was a temp gig, you know. <clears throat> I was I was down on me luck, which before I, I met you, Frosty. And so then, obviously, that'd be before obviously. I met you, Kremi. I don't and, think you've and, ever mentioned it in the years we've been together. Oh, that's where 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 Hootsie and I I met. It's where we where we first got our, our inseparable bond. She was just this big. You've never you've never called it the Witchlight Carnival in all the stories you've told. You just said the carnival. Oh yeah, well because like I kind of took Hootsie. Uh, I'm not sure if. Uh, it was like, oh hey, take this owl bear. I'm like, come on, let's see, let's get out of here. Well, the last time I visited, it was owned by two Shatter Kai, a Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. I believe that they still run it, but they were not the original owners. Oh. Mr. So Witch. if it was a different owner when you stole your owl bear, you should be fine. Oh, it was eight years ago. It was the last time it was here. Well, that was the last time I was there. And it was run by a Mr. Witch and a Mr. Light then. <laughs> well, oh, well, mate. Well, I, I didn't really meet any of them. I kind of just stayed with the goblins. I was I was really base level carny. A little bit of little bit of beast, uh, beast taming once I earned myself. A little juggling. Nothing major. I don't, maybe, they probably don't well, They have a me. really high turnaround rate. Yeah, I guess yeah, the benefits weren't very good either. Well, that's a big <gasps> 
I mean, it's a, is it eight days or eight years? Eight days. Eight days and eight years, yeah. Yes. Eight days and uh, we have three to get to them. <gasps> so you worked eight days every eight years. Oh, no, no. I, I, I worked for, like, I worked for uh, a couple days and then I made out with Hootsie. It was only for a couple days I worked there. You made out with Hootsie? Yeah. We made, I, 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 I snatched her up. Oh, Hootsie. What? What? Everything you sound sound. This is ador- this adorable this adorable little girl right here is Hoochie. Oh, actually, I have some carvings that I did of her when the day I first found her, and I'll pull out all of these. Uh, oh, I mean, you see here, and you're gonna see like a bunch of like wooden tokens sla- uh, fall <laughs> down, and I've carved uh, <laughs> pictures. Yeah. And this was the first time I taught her how to do her first stylish jig. Oh, she was so good. And look at her little hat. And then this was the time, this was, it was her very first uh, corn and corn alone day festival. Oh gosh, she ate so many corn, she threw up all night. Oh, you say yes. that the one you made of us is actually quite, quite true. Oh yeah, look, we look really nice together. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go to bed. Well, 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 hold well, 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 on. Hold on. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's you five, have not. <laughs> it's five thirty. Yes, it's we're gonna. It's thirty minutes past my bedtime. Uh, if we could just stay up for a little while longer, uh, mm. perhaps have a, a little more coffee. We have a few questions to make sure that we can <gasps> do what you're asking us to do. Okay. Let me go the whole night. Man singing outside. That's just Tom. <laughs> Tom, you have a very lovely singing voice. Don't give up on your dreams. He's an asshole. Um, oh. sorry, I hate you, Tom. Never mind. Give up on your dream. You're terrible. <laughs> oh, well, I have a checklist of all the things I need to tell anyone who wants to take this quest. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, do you have a, an item on your checklist about the grand reward? Sabilna is a fairy godmother to Morty. Did I tell you that already? Yes, yes, I you mean, did. you sort of alluded to it. What does that mean? She created the carnival as a way for mortals to enter her domain and beseech her aid. Yeah, you said that. Tom, yeah. shut up! We're trying to have a conversation! <laughs> Gosh, man, you're right, he is an asshole! Shut up, Tom! <laughs> when last you visited the carnival, me! When last I visited the carnival, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I you chose you this for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> She's in the Palace of Heart's Desire. Oh, now we got that already. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. She assumes many forms. She's a statuesque woman, large blonde hair. Oh, I thought you were oh. somewhere else. <laughs> she has a chicken foot tattoo. I can't do the foot thing on my throat. It's fucking broken. Yeah, oh, well, just just your morning frost. I'm glad. Ooh. I'm glad. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yes, that's about it. So. Well, Shut okay. up, Tom! <laughs> Tom! <laughs> but, do you want me to go? Sh- okay. Thank you! <laughs> Thank Sorry! <laughs> and he leaves. You're not that bad! Don't give up on dream soon! Fuck yourself! <laughs> He's kind of a dick. I told you. Oh, um... Prismere is a domain of delight. Oh, ruled no. by oh. Sabilna, who's my patron. Well, we got that, but the She's line. been missing for 15, 15 years. Oh, you knew. Oh, wait, I thought oh, you said she was in the palace of all Shazaya. If you know where she is, how is she missing? She's not responding to my text messages. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just like Remy was leaving poor Kremi on red. That's right. Let's not bring that up. And then he threatened us with murder. That's it. That was all that was on my notes. I have many questions, Kremi. All right, are you going to ask me the questions or are you going to ask him the questions? Well, I thought you had a pressing question to start with, and then I have following questions. Oh, well, I, I mean, there's one major question you haven't really gotten. This grand reward here, what, what is it? What's the nature of it? I would like to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could help you with that. Is that playing grand reward too? I pick up a pi- uh, I pick up a pillow with like a beautiful <laughs> pug, a pug, pug, shade. pug doggo on it. He's looking up in the most cute manner with huge eyes, and I just <laughs> eh, it's gonna be all right. Yes, it's gonna be drink. fine, <laughs> Mr. Rosloff. It's all over. <laughs> 
That's fine. We'll take care of your pixies. <laughs> we'll sell your pumpkins for hundreds of thousands of gold pieces. <laughs> no, he doesn't actually say that, though. Holy oh, shit. I would like to die. And I don't say this to be morbid. I've had an unusually long life thanks to Sibilna. I had friends just like you have each other and went on many grand adventures. I've accumulated millions of gold as well as a drove of magical items that I would like to bequeath to my predecessors so that I can finally rest. But I don't feel right leaving this earthly plane until I know Zabilna is all right. Mm -hmm. I'm too old to see to it myself. So I have decided... I Tom. like this song. Oh, Tom! Hi, <laughs> Tom! What did we just uh, say? Tom, Come on, shut man. the fuck up! Gideon, why don't you have a word with Tom? Yeah, I'll do it right at it back. <laughs> 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 The playlist ended, so it's doing yeah. random, like, um, similar songs. Yeah, it's jumping into random. Yeah, we're probably, like, but, monetized. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we're ten ways yeah, to yeah. monetize. Sponsored by Cleavage. You did say bequeath with a TH at the end, correct? <laughs> bequeath. That's right. Yes, thank you. I don't know. Anyway, I'd like to give my shit to people, all right? That's very, uh, uh, honorable. We would like to take your shit, please. And so I... Do you say Millions? Yeah. Did you hear that? That's just Tom. We gotta kill Bob. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna stop us from literally getting money. Yeah. I love this song. <laughs> well, he stopped singing. Nope. Oh, he's a devil on that banjo, old Tom. <laughs> I thought you hated Tom. Yeah, he's a right old asshole, but the boy can play. <laughs> mm, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I want to give my, my everything I've got. I want. I want to give it to someone who can use it. Someone who can do good. We can do good with with your millions of gold and a trove of magical items. Uh, Let uh, us be the ones to 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 help you pass on into the ever after, with 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 no guilt on your conscience, with reunited with with you with your amazing patrons, Bilna. Let us be the ones. It would be an honor for us to take this on. I actually agree. Yes, it would be an honor. Absolutely. Wait, do we do to just killing this guy? No, 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 no. We're not. We're not. We're not going to kill him. We're, we're we're going to make sure that his uh, uh, loose ends are tied, so that he can pass away with grace and dignity. Did I tell you about where Zabilna's palace is? Yeah, yeah, the heart's desire or something. Okay, uh, palace of heart's desire sure in the domain of delight. It actually sounds. Uh, yeah, it's called Prismere. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's so, on the poster. No, no punching <laughs> people to death this time, okay? Oh. Well, I don't know why that's always your now, first thing. You're gonna need to go to the the carnival, and there is some way in the carnival to get to Prismere. I don't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. And so you will have to figure that out, unfortunately, on your own. Have you been to Prismere yourself? No. Is, is, is the is the Witchlight Carnival setting up out in the swamp? It's about two and a half days. Two days. It's a walk from here. Three days. Oh. No, the carnival leaves in three days. <clears throat> you have to get there by the final night. Now, I don't want to seem insensitive, but if we're taking even a three-day journey, you seem like you got hours left. We're For what? For life. I want to go to bed. <laughs> it doesn't look that bad, no. dude. <laughs> dude. Don't don't go gently into that good night. You have so much to live for. Like this novelty plaque you got as a gift. I smell old people. Oh, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very yeah. funny. I, I picked that up from uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Tim Jumbalaya? No. Oh, oh very charming. You have so much to live for. Just hang oh, on, Spencer. There. Isn't Spencer in town? Spencer. No. Always send those gifts. Yeah, I, I, I do recall. No, Spencer. it was a. It looked kind of like you, just a 
Older! Is he your brother? You don't mean... You don't mean Dr. Etouffet. Right? Yeah, that's that's the boy! That is my brother. Yeah. Mm. What? Kermie! Yeah, he told me his name is Kermie. He told you his real name. <sighs> wow. Why is it that I saw Wait. it? Or maybe you maybe you peered into his mind and saw it. Yeah, usually he likes yeah. to, you know, use his Etouffet moniker, but that's right. I got right. that from him. He said it was magical. It is. No, he is a bad liar. It's the magic of aging gracefully. <laughs> Mandrake, let me ask you one more question, and then I will <clears throat> let the rest of my crew ask you more questions. Uh, it, the it's five forty-five. The steps. The steps. <gasps> we are going to the carnival. Yeah. We're gonna find our way into the carnival. Yeah. We're gonna find our way into Prismere. Yeah. We're going to find out the uh, current fate of your Zabilna. Yeah. Of Zabilna. Uh -huh. And then we're going to return here. Yeah. With proof. With not just spit all not over my not mustache. Not just proof. <laughs> but we were we are gonna have to find uh -huh. a way back here. Yeah. And then we're going to have to. Uh, give you? Do you have a message for her? Is there anything we should be saying when we see her? No. So no message. Like, if you like, write her a letter, we could pass it to her. Oh. All right. <laughs> hey, get in. Would you just peek out the window to make sure Tom's not setting back up? <laughs> Oh, fucking Tom, there he is. Why don't you step outside for a little bit? Yeah. Just a stand at the door. He's Tom will, will run away. I'll issue him a gentle reminder. Oh, Nui Blanche. What? We're going to be here till Nui Blanche. Oh. Is that yeah, he's writing, and we're going to have a message to deliver. At the very least, it'll be our uh, uh, halfway moment uh, when we start walking out of the woods, so to speak. Well, I hope you're right. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot he has to say. I mean, if you want us to come by, oh no, I guess we can't wait till the morning. We we we, we got to head out right away. Oh wait, Hoochie, you have been into Feywild. I guess you would be from the Feywild. If I oh, thank you. I oh, got you there. How about that? Now this is just a sign that says "Antiques Made Daily." <laughs> oh, oh, you wrote on the back of it. <laughs> you wrote on the back of it. I see it. I see it. <laughs> Uh, very, very nice. Uh, I will keep this close to my person. Thank you. Um, how can we prove to you when we return that we've delivered this message? That's part of your quest! Well, but it, surely she has, like, wrapped a code word that she would tell only us. No! Hmm. Well, we'll find that proof. All right. Well, do you mind if we get this in writing that if we successfully do this... I could provide a contract that you could just sign if that would help. Yeah, please. And I'll snap, and uh, there'll be like a, a burst of almost shadow, and a, a filled out contract will appear in the air, floating with a line and an X next to it. And I'll uh, reach into my jacket and I'll pull out a uh, a nice carved bone pen that has a feather on the end of it. If you just uh, use this oh, to sign, so this is horrific. It might hurt a little bit, but just Why? sign quick. Oh, the arthritis! <laughs> he signed, you can hear his wrist creaking as he signs his name. It sounds like a tree falling over in the forest. That is <laughs> as, a nightmare. As he signs his name, you'll see that it's Oh! No! Oh! God, arthritis! You'll see that it's in red ink, but it's actually his his own blood. Oh, um, wasn't the blood that him. bothered me? I've got the beatus. And you see as he pricks his finger and does a test. <laughs> Why does that contract smell like pumpkin spice? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm taking away the combat tonight. <laughs> uh, the contract will roll up in midair, and you'll see it sort of seal with a uh, magical stamp of a skull with a top hat, and it'll sort of <clears throat> vanish in a puff of shadow. Thank you, kind of friend. Yeah. And so you you obviously want the uh, the down payment to start. 
obviously. He, <laughs> he uh, rifles through. Uh, he's got this cute little crocheted purse on his side, and he uh, opens a little button and he rifles through. And you see that there are like three or four pairs of bifocals. Um, he's got a pair of mittens. Um, there's uh, another coffee mug in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, an old wallet that appears to be empty. Uh, a picture of a really, really sexy older lady. Um, and then there is um, what a, an envelope that seems to be filled with things. And he... Uh, I'm sure just half a million or a million gold pieces to start says, would make. It says rewards for quest. Open. And then it, with an arrow pointing to the back. And he looks <laughs> and he oh! He turns it around <laughs> and he opens up the envelope and he starts rifling through. There's a bag of beans! Oh. oh I love beans. You are much too short for this, young man. Cloak of displacement. Gosh, you're like all the girls from what? high school. He oh, looks wow. towards you. Uh, some letters. And he looks towards you and gives you a bag of 500 gold pieces. Oh. Hey, this is, uh... I think we might... Oh, we might have just gotten all of the gold we need. Oh, wow, that's probably a bag of homework. We'll count it when we're back. <sighs> I just did a quick <clears throat> math, Frosty. You've been, I've, been, I've been practicing. I know. <clears throat> All right, friend. Well, um, just point us in the direction of the carnival, and we'll start on our way oh, right now. Oh, oh, oh. Did I give you the letters? Yeah. You gave him oh. the gold. You gave me reading material. <laughs> Can you read, Sonny? We're going to find out, I guess. <laughs> I hope so. Well, with that, I think that I would like to go to bed now. Well, friend, it's been a pleasure doing business oh, with you. Oh, 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 I can't have you leave yet. Oh, boy. You're All not right. going to be able to get into the carnival without these. These? Oh, don't mind if I... Wow. <laughs> oh, these wow. are nice tickets. What do you think they make these from? If you try and get into the carnival without a ticket, there are lots of horrible things that can happen. The so you make sure you keep that on you. I think I got the foil version. This is very valuable. <laughs> no, it says second edition. Sorry. Oh, shit. It's beta. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't appreciate that we run the Agway to lay low after failing as carnival workers and this carnival comes into town and shows us up even in the quality quality of their tickets i mean this is just this is beautiful you know what Kremi? and don't take this the wrong way the yeah. one thing that i never did get from the witch like carnival was an iou oh thanks rica that 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 helps yeah no i don't know i i, I don't know what the point of that was but you know i think what the, it's not ever on this thing. The, Hoochie was not happy there, so they're not, they Hoochie lo- Hoochie loved Carnival the crew. He's you little, love dancing. It's little details like this why we ultimately collapsed and fell into such bankruptcy. Yeah, what were our tickets like? That and that fucking account. Just crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna let you do it. <laughs> oh my god, when are they gonna uh, shut up? Leave! Oh, leave on a holographic kick! Oh, um, well, I, uh, uh, goodbye, uh, Pixie Ladies. Uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in, um, uh, eight days plus three. Uh, oh! The eight- time flows differently in the Feywild! So. Hopefully you will have more time than you need and not less. Even better. If, no. uh, assuming that we don't do, do it the other way, then everything's going to be just fine with the remedy. Oh, yes. We'll be back soon. <gasps> we will find the building. We'll bring it back and we'll all have pumpkin pie together. <gasps> Thank you for these beans. <sighs> yeah, and for these letters. And for the pie, thank you, and, and the chantilly cream, and the custard, nice touch. <laughs> You're welcome. He pets you on the head. You're a really nice lad. Oh, thank you. Hey, Tom, you can come back for your serenade. 
<laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> hey, Tom, I'll figure he you just... dick. Can you just break his arm as we leave? Just yeah. Little, just a little. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> just one half, not just, all yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little. That's awful. Oh, no no compound fractions this time, all right? Yeah. <laughs> just so we can't play the banjo for a little bit. Wait, way. what's a con? Is that when you see the bone? It's when it spirals. Can well, you, I don't fire. mean to be rude, but can you get out of my house? Good night. Good night. Good night. Can you it's say thank you to the nice man? Hold on, who's just gonna say thank you? Oh, that's how she says thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're She's so polite. Good night, puppy. <laughs> he pet suits he and he shambles upstairs to his bedroom. Good night, friend. Good night, Mr. W- uh, Rosloff. Well, good night. All right, friends. Because I've got a witch light ticket. Uh, so we're standing we outside. We all do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is that genuine displacer beast hard? Oh yeah. I don't know why I gave it to me. Yeah. Here you go. Oh my goodness! Look at this. Do you see this? Can you like make that? Is that like part of your thing? Or uh, I mean, it, it's kind of it's kind of trippy. What yeah. I'm, you I'm see seeing. that? It is displacer beast. They have, they are able to refract the light, and they are able to appear as if they are standing further away than they are. It's incredible. Is this a bag of beans? Yeah, it's a bag of beans. So, um, there's like a a benefit to wearing, I guess. You're probably harder to. Oh yes, to yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my good, look at this. This is pristine. Very nicely done. Well, given that you know. You're the only one that can, like, patch us up. Why don't you keep that on yourself? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll fold it up and I'll need to make sure I uh, commune with the displacer be spirit to make sure that that's <clears throat> all right. And I will thank it for its uh, its sacrifice to keep us safe. Kermie, and then I will put it on. Kermie, you know the way? You do. Fuck. Just, he told you... <laughs> You know, he never told us that. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to go back inside, wake him up. We only have three days. Slice of that pie. Just give him one second. Knock, 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 knock. You see, as he wake shambles up. to the door wake and up. opens it, he's wake in a up. dressing gown, the same slipper as a little nightcap. <sighs> I'm so sorry to get you out of bed. Uh, I feel terrible. I really do. But we we left without asking you the most important thing. I must have forgotten to ask. I definitely didn't ask you at least five or six or eight times. Um, which way to the carnival, friend? Towards Bog Blossom. I know exactly where that oh, is. Oh, oh, oh! Let me go. Let me go. <sighs> this one, no. Oh, Don't think that was common. Oh. Uh, are you sure? I mean, that sounded like it was important. And I need <laughs> to get you out of bed again. He's going he's to hand you a postcard that just says, Welcome to Agwe. <laughs> <laughs> this woman, this really nice lady named Susan, keeps coming by and giving me this stupid Watchtower magazine. <laughs> mm. Is that a deep cut, Rich? Is that a deep cut? It's an Elvis Witness magazine. <laughs> it sounded like a deep cut. Yeah. Wait, is that true? The world's gonna end? Oh, no! We gotta hurry! Oh. Oh. Yeah, she's part of that Church of the Blind and Light. Oh, yeah, she wants to hear. Wait. Oh, she actually... This wasn't all oh. a, a bit. <laughs> <sighs> what does it say, Gid? You can't read, right? Well, I'm trying to figure it out right now if you'd let me think on it. <laughs> all right. Just take them, you know. can do it! I give you guidance. As you see a little wispy... <laughs> you'll see um, uh, a wispy uh, spectral... Um, I don't know. What's like a smart monster? Um, actually, no. For you, it'll be a rust monster. And uh, a, nice. little, a little beetle-like uh, thing will swirl around you very quickly and then zip back. And, and I'll touch your shoulder and you're going to be fine, Gideon. And I give you resistance. <laughs> <laughs> well, suddenly this, these words are just jumping off the page. <laughs> Since when boycott the carnival? Since when is the carnival of delight owned by damned Shadar Kai? Question mark. This place is crawling with evil exclamation mark protect our community and send this wretched place back to the shadow fell well hmm. that's weird. rude oh 
That's not very nice May at I all. See that? Oh, I thought yeah. she was really nice until she came here. Yeah. No, so people, I guess, don't like this carnival. I don't know why people don't like Shadar Kai. Well, I mean, there's, a, I mean, it's, I guess it's a similar thing for every time we showed up. There was always people who was like, "Oh, these people are corrupting the view and scamming us out of all of our money and making Ooh. us gamble and drink." Would you do me a favor? Another one. I'm giving you everything I have, Sonny. Yeah, of course. I'm just gonna be dead anything. soon. Gideon will do anything for you, I, Mr. Rosloff. I saved this. Because I always wanted to be the Witchlight Monarch. But I don't think I'll ever get back to the carnival. Could you do your best to try and, to try and be the Monarch this year? They crown it on the very last night. Oh yeah, I did. I think I'm you can you can sit on a throne, be a monarch, a real one. Oh, like an actual king or queen? Yeah. I mean, sure, friend. Yeah, we can we can try our best. Why don't you take this? <laughs> Oh, wow. <clears throat> Who will be crowned our mo Witchlight Monarch? You know, I really wish I paid attention in orientation. He shuts the door. Good night! A massive latching bolt. Gosh, we have to be the Monarch! Well, I mean... Sit on the throne, be a real Monarch. He didn't say he'd give us anything extra for it, but if you Oh, but try, yeah, just I so mean, nicely. <gasps> we... Hootie, you're gonna be the monarch. You're gonna be a little pretty princess. Well, who knows? Maybe we get something. I mean, monarchs, uh, you know, have gold. Maybe we get something for being the monarch. Oh, like, you know, instead of those two-bit carnival prizes that we gave out, maybe like some legitimate, you know, something of value. Grammy, did you just get directions to where we need to go? Fuck. Oh, no, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. I, I, I forgot, but I know we did. <laughs> No, it's in the direction of Bog Possum, and I know exactly where that is. It's like to the northwest. It would have been so horrible if we just did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's make our way. I want to discuss and think about how we can become the monarch. All right. Well, gentlemen, follow me. Um, Their eyes I, look dead. It's a nightmare. <laughs> do I know the Church of the Blinding Light? Have I uh, heard of Sure. Them? You know, it's interesting that this church here is uh, trying to boycott. I wonder if uh, they intend to bring violence to the carnival. Hmm. You know, I've only heard the name. What else can you tell me about this blinding light church? I mean, they, you know, they're a small church in Agwe. I don't know much more. I know that, it, you know, it's a religion worshipped up and down the coast. Um, is it? It's the Foltus religion, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they worship some god of, uh, you know, truth and law and light. And hmm. they, they're, very, they're very pious. Uh, and so, you know, I've heard of other carnivals coming down to much worse fates than we did. So hopefully they don't intend to bring this one any trouble. It's all right. Well, I thought that you were rolling. No. <laughs> all Just right, me well, hitting <clears throat> shit I shouldn't. Follow me. Let's make it uh, double speed. We should we should try to get there as quickly as possible, and this is quite treacherous ter terrain. It'll be through the swamp most of the way, so we'll go as fast as we can, but, you know, we may have to swim, wade, uh, climb over <coughs> roots, uh, trudge through muck and grime. So, y'all ready? I can't believe our good fortune. We... I'm happy. Oh, yeah. to, I'm happy to do all of those things. Should, if 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 Mr. Rosloff is telling the truth, good grief. The job board paid off. I can't believe it. I mean, it's like if this is our prayers that are answered. You understand? I mean, what what are the odds that something would fall into our lap like this? It's illogical, but let's see this to its conclusion. I have a good feeling, and I have it in blood. So if we make good, he can't back out. That's why you're here. All right. <laughs> this way, my pumpkin. Maybe you'll get, I'll, I'll get a uh, little help from the uh, my friends on the other side. 
<laughs> and I will try to commune with the, the primal spirits to help us through the swamp. The urge to smash these pumpkins is overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Smashing pumpkins. Uh, does that manifest in any way? Uh, I would just be regularly casting guidance, basically, okay. uh, to help to help you, us along the way. You take one last look at Mad- Madrick's house. Um, did you read the letters? No, it's Spock. And it's okay. Um, <laughs> you uh, you take one last look at Madrick's house as you make your way along the winding path off of his property, and Kremi is in the lead as he is uh, guiding you. <clears throat> back into the swamp towards uh, what he believes to be Bog Possum. And at first, you notice nothing strange. But as you continue further in, Kremi, you begin to notice that these are not the cypress trees you remember. These are mangrove trees. The roots are larger. The swamp water is murkier. And it almost has an incandescent look to it almost as if it glitters and sparkles and almost like an oil slick kind of look to it as it moves you begin to listen and all around you the noises of the swamp are similar but different almost as if almost as if they are the sounds are heightened in a way and you begin to look for some of the um some of the waypoints that you would normally look for, the landmarks that would mark your path, and you realize that you don't see any of those landmarks. You turn around. You and From this point, you should be able to see Madrick's home off in the distance. But as you turn around, the way that you had come, that path, is completely gone. This isn't right. These trees don't even grow here. Where the hell are we? I, I mean, we... Oh, Grummy, you got us lost already? Well, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. So we, we're coming from southeast. It is, but no, I don't no, I don't even recognize where we came from. This is... Just remember to change your socks. Hoochie, you especially. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just think. This is... No, I, there are no trees like this at all anywhere in the Agway. Unless this is new. I mean, maybe it's like those giant pumpkins. Maybe something in the soil <laughs> changed and, and the biomes changed since I was last here. Yeah, it's been some years. I imagine perhaps some magical changes. Perhaps uh, some kind of mm-hmm. uh, calamity mm-hmm. has occurred. Or uh, mm-hmm. Just speculating. I mean, everything just seems kind of... I don't know, grimy or darker or like... I don't know, it doesn't feel like home. Do you think that we're still on the right path? Or do we need to try and turn back? Well... I mean, I don't know what else to say. We we, we are flat lost. I, mean, uh, I have no idea where we're... None of this looks familiar. Hmm. Hmm. You think maybe like my sense of direction was all mixed up? Maybe did he like put some kind of charm on me or like some kind of curse? Well, he wanted us to get there. Thank you. Wouldn't have fucked it all up for us. <laughs> like immediately. Yeah, like, like immediately. We're only a few hours in. <laughs> oh no. Um, can I? Do I have a sense of which direction is north? Yes. You, based on the You don't user. feel like your sense of direction has changed. It's just that the terrain around you is different. You imagine you could still make your way to where you believe Bog Possum and the carnival should be. You just won't have the landmarks to guide you. You'll have to purely use your sense of direction. All right. Here's the thing. I don't think we're lost because I know which direction we're headed. And I know which direction we came from. And when it comes to a survival situation, those are the two most important things. So I vote we just keep going. And even though this looks strange and it doesn't feel like home, I think... I mean, it has to be that way. We haven't passed it. I, I, I know that much. I think we have a hypothesis. And we still have... How much time left? Um, you have... 
basically two days to travel, and then the third day is the last day of the carnival. We still have time to figure this out. Let's continue this way, and either you'll find something that's familiar, or we'll run into the carnival. All right. I was just like the job board. Which is, oh, it's a cat. And boop, we found that. And then we talked to Mr. Osloff. If we this keeps happening, this is where we're supposed to be. Oh, fuck the cat. <laughs> oh, is the cat going to be okay, you think? Maybe we just keep our eyes out for it. I mean, you know, we're here anyway. Roll a perception check. <laughs> All of us? Uh, yeah. Oh, um, get in. Natural 20. Really? God. Yeah. Nice. Uh, are you worried about the kitty cat, Gideon? I'm not worried about the cat, okay? I'm just saying, we picked up a job, and, you know, I don't particularly like jobs, but all I'm saying is keep your eyes peeled for the cat, okay? Uh, are you uh, sure you don't like the kitty cat, My Gideon? perception is a 23, and my D100 is a 65. Okay. Uh, you, you think back as Gideon mentions the cat, and you realize that there was a small tabby cat sitting on the stairs of Madrick's house that looked exactly like the cat in that photo. I say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this way. Fellas, I think Gideon's a little worried about the kitty cat. Hey, you watch it. All right. I'm just saying. Let's just keep I'm marching. just saying it's nice to have some tender feelings to cute animal friends. I'm just saying it, you know, it, you got to you gotta be let out your sensitive side, Mr. Listen, Cole. It's not that I care about the cat, per se. It's mm. just if we're out here, we're heading to the carnival. It's an extra five silver. Yeah, if you saw five silver pieces lying on the ground, you'd pick it up, too. Okay. I'll believe you. <laughs> anyway, I start trudging towards yeah. the direction that I think is the correct one. So you, you've been lost in the swamp, and you're still lost in the swamp. Yeah. All right, okay. and that's where we're on the well, session. Well, guys, we're lost in the swamp. <laughs> I can't believe we're still fucking lost in this swamp. What do we do now that we're lost in this swamp? Should we head back? Well, I mean, what if we get even more lost going back? Hmm. I uh, think we're where, where we need to be. I need you all to roll a Constitution saving throw for me, please. <gasps> That's not a Nikki troll. We've nope. taunted the DM. Fuck. That's good. Well, I'm gonna let it ride. Mm -hmm. The dirtiest twenty. Taking those dice away. <laughs> so dirty. I'm taking those dice. Dirty away. twenty is a redundancy on saving throws. Why? Because you can't create a. Oh, saving you can't throw. create a save. Yeah. Or like a, no yeah, but dirty just dirty. means you're adding the modifier. It doesn't mean anything else. Well, there's no reason to say, you don't say dirty 17. That was still making it redundant. So. It would still technically be dirty. It's just funny. No. It's fun to say dirty 20, but when uh, you, I got anything where you add the modifier. I got an 8. <laughs> what, what, what did you get? Natural, natural the value oh, that you What did you get, And Krem? dirty whatever you actually uh, I got an 18. Okay. Uh, Crummy and Frost, you... Uh, you walk forward and you step down into the muck and a large bubble rises to the surface of the water and as it pops, this noxious gas begins to spill out of the water and you feel a little woozy, a little overcome for a second, but you're able to shake it. Gideon and Gricko, you are not. This smells you horrible, <laughs> putrid. I need you both to roll a D100 for me, please. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <sighs> 27. Okay. 16. Oh, you fuck. <laughs> That's the worst number. What? 16? Yeah, you're dead. Oh, no. You're just done. Already? Yeah, your, your ribs turned into What did you snakes. get? 16. <laughs> and what, sorry, what did you get, Mike? Uh, 27. <laughs> Reroll it. Oh. Oh. Oh, Krimi Run. My ribs are turning to snakes. 34. Krimi, <laughs> it's happening. Krimi, Krimi. Krimi, it's happening. Krimi, it's happening. Okay, um, you begin to turn into a corpse. You what? immediately start vomiting up all of your all of your innards, and you watch as your skin begins to start desiccating, and your um, your bones start to move to the surface, or at least that's what you think. 
Oh, well, that was really fucking best. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Rico, you believe yourself oh to be made God, of dude. gold. What? You believe yourself to be made of gold. But he's not made of gold. But you're not made of gold. <laughs> oh, Did, do we see this? You, they you look, see him. Yeah, you see Gideon and Gricko. This is a hallucination. Oh, okay, so I don't see Gideon turning into a corpse. No. Okay. Right. But Gideon thinks he's turning into a corpse. You all right? Did you eat something? Oh. But you do see him begin to vomit. He's just not vomiting his innards like he believes he is. <laughs> oh, is that... Oh, uh, well, is that big intestine or small? <laughs> are, you all, are you both all right? Uh, Grammy, can, uh, are you guys cover your mouth? Why? No, I'm not why? fucking all right. I'm dying. I'm turning to fucking dust. Well, oh, are you feeling all right, buddy? I'm trapped and I'm so beautiful at the same time. Right, what, what's happening, Grigo? What the hell is going and on? And also have a very nice intrinsic value. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you finally come to realize this, Grico, but you, you, seem, you seem very rigid. You seem stiff. Oh, oh no, I can't. Have you seen my composition of my person has changed? I am now made of gold. Made of gold. Yeah, and I don't mean as like a very a self-empowering mantra that I would say after I finish my morning stretches. He, I think he I think he means literally he is a goal. Uh, Gideon, Gideon, uh, what what are you thinking of yourself? Uh, I'm thinking that we had a good run, guys, but this is it for me. From your elbow down oh. now, it's just complete skeleton. Don't tell oh, me you're dying. God, All dude. the flesh is gone. You've been through. You just puke up a little bit of morning breakfast, and you dead. I puked up my whole, all everything that's inside of me, and my arms and bones. <laughs> that's just like bones. some some shrimp and grits, buddy. I don't, I don't know. Like poking around with my cane and like. What do you oh, don't touch um, that! Don't I need that. you as you let loose another bubble of swamp gas. I need you to roll a. Um, I need both so, of you need to roll a uh, a Constitution saving throw at disadvantage because you're punk. You're poking around in the swamp. Fourteen. I fail. Uh, six. Uh, both roll a d100 for me, please. <laughs> you intentionally did that, you fucker. It's like, I don't want to be left out of the RP prompt. No, no, no. <laughs> oh. 88. Oh, that's mm. a good one. 83. Oh. oh. I can go to the 80s. 80, you, didn't you get 83 earlier? Or did you get 30? I haven't rolled a d100 oh. yet. Did I? Oh, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, we should sworn. probably get you to a dock if you feel like you're dying, but I mean, it doesn't look any different than you just having a, a night out. You said 88. Your knees become fused. <laughs> you can see ability to run. Yes! <laughs> this is a fast <laughs> one. Let's go! <laughs> see the thing. <laughs> my fucking legs, Grego. <laughs> Oh no, my legs have become fused. <laughs> You're all fine, but look at my fucking legs. Oh my god. How am I going to live like this? Oh, oh, you're, you're right. I've never seen you skip leg day. You have very nice calves, Frosty. My legs are my best aspect. This is a nightmare. <laughs> um, what, what did you get? 83. Uh, vines and leaves are now growing from your body hair. Oh, yeah, I got this last time, too. Did you? Well, I got it during Hypnotip. Yeah, do it. So it's, just, it's appropriate. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is this what you're seeing? You see this? What? That I'm turning to bone? No. I'm, that I'm wasting away in front of you. Yeah, you look fine, but I'm, I'm turning into, like, into some sort of, like, vine man. Maybe this is my superpower. You ever read those comic books where they like, you know, come across some sort of radioactive, you know, mutated animal? And- Grimmy, you don't have any vines coming out of your body. Look at my fucking legs. <laughs> what about them? <laughs> They're just legs. Well, I can't move them, obviously. Look. But look, look at your arms. You don't have any just, vines just coming out of them. Spread your legs. Just spread them, Frosty. Why can't you move your legs? Why are you not. 
Look, I'm gonna explain them for you. And I try to like whip the vines out of my arms. I try to like wrap you, around AT-AT style and pull you them apart. You see the vines whip out and wrap around Frost's legs. You try to pull them apart. There's nothing you coming out of Grimmy's arms. Oh my god, they won't come apart. You see what's happening? There's and nothing. He, these are strong vines. Why are you guys doing all that? I'm here dying, and you're just flailing about, and you're knocking your knees together, and you're just standing there with your intrinsic value, and I'm fucking wasting away. Thank you, Gideon. As this happens, yeah. can it occur or does it occur to Frost that because they're describing things about themselves that are not true that he's seeing, that this could be an illusion? I would say you're probably smart enough to put that together. Without a roll. I'll roll an intelligence check. That's where I'm a fighter. <laughs> I would say a disadvantage because you are dealing with your uh, your knees situation. Oh, with your fucking so legs. you are a little you are a little bit uh, distracted. Fourteen. Fourteen, yeah, I would say not necessarily that it's an illusion, but that something has overcome your friends. You firmly believe your knees are fused together. Oh yeah. But you think that maybe they're losing it. You see, visually, you're all being affected by some kind of illusion. Whatever you think is afflicting you, Gideon, it's not real. Oh, visually. You guys need to help me with my fucking legs. <laughs> What's the matter with your fucking legs? My le- my knees are locked. E- look at this. Oh, you look, look at him. There's, there's, nothing, there's you, nothing fucking wrong. You look down, and his legs are clearly spread apart. I'm just... Lucy, do you will you still love me even though I'm still made of metal? I'm sorry. Oh, can you please uh, roll a uh, constitution saving throw at disadvantage for Hootsie? Oh, oh my god. A natural one. I can't, yeah, I failed. A D100 for Hootsie, please. Uh, Okay. 41. She does not have immunity to this. Hootsie believes you're all delicious. (laughs) (laughs) Roll for initiative. That would be a nightmare start to this campaign. <laughs> she believes that, no, it, that doesn't work, because I don't think she'd have any idea what a kleptomaniac is. 92? Sure. Let's see what 92 is. No, not 62. that 52? 51. That's so stupid. We're going to make a new list. 65? We are going to make a new list. Yeah. We'll put it on Patreon. 90? How many? You just, just, just no. chill out. Forty-two. Four. Fifty-three. Yeah. So what was the what was the last one you said? Ninety. 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 Sixty-one. Fifty-two. Didn't you say those already? Sixty. <laughs> I mean, zero six. Six. You just pick one. She turns into a giant gummy owl bear. Yeah, I'll just pick one for her. Who, who because... believes that her teeth and nails fall out? That's a classic. Right? That is a classic. Who <laughs> believes all of her fur falls off? You know, I can Hootsie do that. can only sing when she hoots. Who? Um, <gasps> Gold Shrek. Hootsie can The one with uh, the golden Hootsie, um, Everything, everything Hootsie tastes now tastes like um, now tastes like blood. Uh-oh. She'd probably like that. Oh, nothing's changed for you, Hootsie. Hootsie's immune. <laughs> I always knew you were special. No, actually, Hootsie. thank you, Nose. Hootsie believes she's the greatest bar to ever live. Yeah. <laughs> what a classic. Hootsie, you have a, you're, you, oh, your dancing is very nice, Hootsie. Oh, you, you're such a good dancer, but now's not the time. Why don't you help nudge nudge me? Uh, can you help? Uh, I'm, I probably weigh so much, but can you, can you prop me up a little bit? Help me. I can't move. What? Does Hootsie do that? Hootsie's not mine. She'll do that. <laughs> so you're gonna just plunge face first into the swamp water <laughs> as a statue? <laughs> oh, no. I think he might actually die. No, no, no. Uh, no. I'll get you with my vines. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. He's, He's a very heavy gold it. statue. You're not doing anything. You're just going. <laughs> just hold on. Hold on. <laughs> uh, 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 I'll, I'll attempt to push. Uh, I, I think I could probably push him, roll him over so that he's but not. But your drowning. knees are fused. Oh yeah, so yeah. No, 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 I'm over. army crawling over. <laughs> it's deeper than that. Oh, it's deeper than it's that. It's deeper than that. You <laughs> start putting that water up to your nose as you're trying to Talk push him. But your knees are fused together. You uh, you swim forward and you feel a bit. 
bit of mangrove root and it catches right at your knees. Oh you're caught. God. You're stuck. You can't move forward anymore. Gricko, you, you, you better roll over. There's nothing preventing you from just rolling over, friend. I'm sinking. I'm stuck. Gricko, I'm, I'm a, I speak telepathically to you. <laughs> Gricko, you hear my voice in your mind and understand that you can move, <laughs> that you can turn away and not be drowning to death in this moment. My legs are stuck. You have to help me. You have to help me with my fucking legs, Gricko. <laughs> <gasps> Frosty, you're right! I'm made of gold, but I have 16 points of articulation! <laughs> yes, Gricko. You're that's doing weird. it, Gricko. You're believing. No! Come on, Uchi, give me a hand with Frosty, hey! Uchi's busy. She has, um, oh. she has taken uh, a few sticks and she's playing uh, the drums on a tree trunk. Oh, I forgot. I, th I thought you were still on the blood thing. I'm just, I'm sorry. Yeah, I oh, <laughs> Gosh, you're so, you know, you know, she's a real natural drummer, you know? She's banging on stuff. Oh, she, you're the greatest bard that ever lived. Frost, just get up. <coughs> if you think you have it bad, have you seen so many, so much foliage growing from any organic creature? This is disgusting. You oh. think you have it bad. I'm dead. <laughs> you, you look down at yourself at this point, all of your flesh is completely gone. You are nothing but a walking skeleton. I thought there was a villain here, but it turns out it was me. I was the skeleton all along. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Look, I understand you have a skeleton inside you, but you are not a skeleton. It's not inside me anymore, Kramer. <laughs> the skeleton is it. It's all I got left. <laughs> If you were dead, how would you be talking? How would you be experiencing this pleasant conversation? Well, <laughs> oh, that's, you know, I mean, that's a good point. I guess. Well, I, you, you can't, I'm just bones. If you were just bones, then you wouldn't be strong anymore, right? All your, your muscles have well, wasted you've away. Got, you've got some, you quite some impressive gains, Gideon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look, if you were a skeleton, could the skeleton puke, puke up all that disgusting shrimp? It's just bone <laughs> chips. It's all no, bone chips. No, that's chip. just shrimp. From a bone. And maybe some sausage in there. <laughs> oh. oh boy. <laughs> oh, it's happening again. It's happening again. Oh. <laughs> I know. Please go. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Chad. <laughs> We're sorry. You're killing them. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> um, oh, does anyone have any, like, you know, like You guys are just still something? standing in the swamp water? I'm dead. <laughs> My legs are caught on roots. Vines <laughs> growing from my skin. <laughs> Who are you talking to? You, the, the, the dungeon master. I'm not there. You know what, Gideon? Because you're all flesh and bone, I am going to make... I'm gonna turn you to stone. Come on one second, and I'm going to use Lesser Restoration as you see a, a spectral blue uh, basilisk will uh, emerge and whip around, and I'm gonna attempt to cast Lesser Restoration to cure your puking. Oh. Oh. No. Uh -oh. It's, it's not lesser. It's not greater. It's just restoration. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe now. <laughs> For only what is six that? low payments what is that do? Is that, does that do something? I don't know. Oh. I don't know if it cures you of your... Intriguing. I feel, I feel like we've tried this in the past, and Lesser Restoration is always just like... Immediately than that. What, I, I can't remember what Lesser Restoration does. Uh, it's usually like you don't have blindness uh, anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, one disease or one condition affecting it. Oh, the condition can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. Well, I still used it. <laughs> yeah. Second level spell spell. <laughs> if, you, if, you, yeah, if, you, if you describe it, if you describe it, it looks like it eats the spell slot. <clears throat> that's a good rule. I like that. Yeah. Well, that's done nothing for me. I'm still puking, but I, won't, I just won't make the sound anymore. <laughs> 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 you just, you're just bones? Is that what you said? No, you you help me believe I'm still made of gold and cool, shiny on my dad. Yes, Gricko, what can you do for me? 
if you were to perhaps start a uh, a nation, I could back your currency. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, Greg. Oh, cough me up and give me a guru! You need to get me out of... I'm caught. Look no, who cares about what you're going for? We don't even need to go to the... You know, like made gold. I made a gold. Just cut off me arm. That's probably what 100,000, right? 100,000 I mean, gold pieces worth? It was actually made of gold, but I mean... What do we think? Wait! <laughs> Greg will start sawing his arm off. Look at my leg! We all believe something about ourselves that isn't actually true. Except for me. And I know how we can Except it. for my fucking leg. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know how we can prove it. Get it. If you were actually a skeleton, you would, your muscles would have wasted away and you would not be able to punch very well. Great couple. If you were actually made of gold, you'd be able to take a punch real well. You wouldn't feel a thing. So, Gideon, <laughs> you give Gricka one full roundup punch, full force, and, and you'll break his hand. I'm made out of pure metal. No, no, this will be a good test. Gold if, is actually quite you, soft, Gricko. You'll die instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I know how gold and metal works? <laughs> I mean, you'll probably just have a Gideon-shaped hole in you. That's fine. No, you I'm a dead. solid gold form. statue. I'm gr- gr- They don't call me Gricko. My schmentor is literally metal grim grim. For <laughs> nothing, okay? Frosty? You've been telling me the word schmentor for years and I still don't know what it means. So, look, how does that sound? Are you saying you want me to hit Gricko as hard as I can? As hard as he can, that's right. No, he's g- you'll hurt your hand! Well, no, we'll, no, prove no, no, no. we'll prove it. If he hurts his hand and y- your, your skeleton hand bones will. Will crack and disintegrate into dust. I mean, yeah, I don't want to hurt you, hurt you, okay? I got nothing left. Oh, 16 points of articulation. I got about 30 seconds of life. You, my annual you, forearm you, just you, you seem so. Oh, don't want you're going to hurt your fist. You're going to hurt your knuckles. You're going to hurt your. I mean, he's going to be dead either way, so he might as well at least test Frost's theory. You, no, dude, no, you, you, there's no way. You, 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 your knuckles won't survive. Gideon, you don't, I don't want to hurt you. I start biting the vines off my hands as they're growing. You do. What, they what taste, are you doing? They taste like kale. I'm just trying to, you know, keep nice and trim, you know what I mean? Try, try to have some kind of basic hygiene with all these vines. Well, I could hit him or I could probably just pull <laughs> his legs apart. I mean, he, well, his legs are enough. apart right now. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Are, are they actually apart? They are, yeah. <laughs> no, they're locked in place. I'm stuck on this root. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way possible. You're, like, that... you're laying face down in the muck, and your legs are just spread around this root. But to you, they're locked around that root. Look, then, look at how uh, glued they are. And they're not fixed. glued at all. What? <laughs> <laughs> It's about as far as part his legs could possibly be, and trust me, I would know. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, on account of the 16 points of articulation. <laughs> oh, no, Grigo, that's the 17th point of articulation. <laughs> oh, that's 17. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, we don't want to hurt. Uh, Gideon's afraid to punch uh, me because he'll hurt his, he'll hurt his hand. Uh, Frost is clearly just cuckoo bananas. <laughs> if you can do anything about my situation, And you're please. biting the air. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm biting these vines off. And Hooch is doing a very nice, stylish jig. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Hooch. Oh, that's that's actually good. pretty pleasant. It's very nice. Yeah. It's very mm-hmm. nice. Mm, it's quite nice. Uh, all right, so we've tested this out. You want me to punch him as hard as I possibly can yeah. with my skeleton arm? Exactly. Yeah, right. look, you, my arm's gonna explode into bones. All right. Well, well, look. she's afraid. He's afraid to punch me. She. Okay. Well, hey, I'm not afraid. No, I'm like, like you're you afraid. You're not. Okay. No, no, right. no, we don't. Want, we understand you're no, afraid. No, here it comes. Okay. Uh, here it comes. I, I understand you're afraid. We don't want to hurt your head. All right. right just kidding. don't move. I don't want to miss. <laughs> Accidentally, just take your head right off. Like, like no, yeah. like that one time. <laughs> <laughs> when you're done putting a fist-shaped hole into Grico, uh, I could use some help with this root that is uh, uh, tangled around my legs which are paralyzed. You are quite literally sitting on a stump, your legs in the shape of a Y 
<laughs> up in the air. You think you're a skeleton. <laughs> well, I don't which think one anything. of us looks I'm like a skeleton and which one of us looks like we're actually wrapped around roots right now? <laughs> You don't fucking know what you're talking about, <laughs> Gideon. That's crazy talk. <laughs> I'll think I'll just cut off me uh, me leg at least. I Man, think I'll... probably getting punched is a little bit easier than cutting your whole leg off. How but what that... do I know? I'm how throwing is... up my entire intestines. How, and how is that gonna? <laughs> <laughs> how is that gonna help us pay off our debt to Mr. Guru? None of this will. I mean, I'm just trapped in this swamp forever. No, no, a hundred thousand gold pieces would be way more than a leg. We would need to take all of you. Oh, maybe I could be like a no statue in the, the hungry catfish. Perhaps I could be, and maybe they you, they would even pay me. I could do this. <laughs> oh no, like when kids get close, you can move and scare them. Cremo, you, Cremo, you know what you do with a gold piece to test that it's pure? Oh. You 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 bite it, right? Perhaps that's a better test of Grico's goldness. Oh, be- oh because uh, Gideon is he's afraid. We don't want to hurt his hand. Yeah, we don't want to. Yeah, Gideon all, all seems make... hesitant, and I yeah, think he's that very hesitant. You, 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 you're the only person who has yeah. legs that work if uh, Gideon's <laughs> right about his fucking skeleton legs. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just waddle your viney body over there? <laughs> I mean, I could. I did like two steps and I'm at Grigo. Wait, so you want me to bite him? Well, Grigo, if you accept. Tell me if Gideon. No, I don't want to break his teeth! If, you're very soft. If, if, if anything, it'll be like biting into a, a <laughs> jelly donut. <laughs> I poke Grigo. See, does he feel any Yeah, firmer? he definitely feels fleshy. I mean, he is pretty soft. Does that mean he's gold? You watch as he pokes you, and his finger does not make any purchase on your flesh. Like, he is, <laughs> he's getting his fingerprint on your beautiful golden surface. Hey, 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 watch the sheep. <laughs> Kremi, yeah. we have to know if these illusions are true, and we are only seeing them on ourselves, or if they are illusion illusions. Understand? If you bite in, and you taste blood... Then perhaps all of us are afflicted. If not, and you come away with gold, then we have a more serious situation at hand. I mean, I could bite him, but all I'm saying is that'll only prove his situation. Because I'll be a jelly donut, which is not true and not how gold works for us, do you, okay? <laughs> but if Gid was to punch him, then we could have. He already prove... said he's afraid to punch him. Oh, well, okay. Look, I'll we, punch need, him. we need to move very quickly. I'll punch him in the body. No, I don't punch him. I'll punch him. I'll punch him. I'll punch him. I'm not even going to make you roll to hit. You do just hit, so roll damage. No, he don't want to hit you. Ow! It's a D8. Plus I activate five. my fire room. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, fuck! <laughs> Uh, ten, ten points of damage. <laughs> Roll to see if you grip. <laughs> <laughs> you can't grip. Oh. No. Well, well, I guess he's a skeleton. Well, I'm I was saying... almost, it was almost <laughs> funny. Yeah. Yeah. Because he hits automatically, I wasn't going to let him crit. Uh, uh, so you do take ten points of damage, um, <sighs> but you don't feel like you've taken any damage ah! at all, Gricko. Oh. You... <laughs> You were like, oh, I'm, 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 <clears throat> I'm gold, <laughs> and you watch as <clears throat> what you think is Gideon's hand breaking as it comes into contact with you. Gideon, as you oh, yeah. as you punch no, into him, sense. you watch as the bones in your hand completely splinter. It ricochets up your arm, and your entire arm completely falls off. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're, oh yeah, oh, get it! Fucking great. We're fucked. No, I got Gideon, one you are you you. See, I told you you were gonna hurt yourself. You are currently coughing up blood. No, you you are the big But you do look at him, and he is very clearly battered and bruised. He's missing a couple of teeth. His I'm missing a fucking arm because, like I said, I'm a goddamn skeleton. Hey, Wait, yeah, this don't. arm right here. I start no, his arm. I don't feel no, that. My arm's it, missing. You're just poking it. I'm so so sorry. this, and I start like flopping your arm around, and you don't feel anything. All right, there's no arm there. There's no arm here. <laughs> oh, Frost, I fix don't, this, I please. warned you, Gideon. There's no fixing this. It's very obvious that the things that are afflicting us are real. And what's important... 
<laughs> and what's most important is that we can't see it in one another. I see a wounded Gricko and a a very strong Gideon. Do you see the same? I do see the same. And yet they are clearly skeleton and gold. <laughs> oh, <fuck you. laughs> I didn't mean. I didn't want to hurt you, Gideon. <laughs> There's Your no- lip is really swollen now. It's making oh, very. I didn't mean to do it. You I didn't want to hurt you either, Greco. Just right up until I punched you. There's no other explanation. You a little oh, bit right in that moment. I hate, I hate to do it, do you? It's all real, Krimi. I'm you don't sorry, understand. Gideon. I didn't mean to hurt you. I, love it. I didn't mean to hurt your hand. That's the answer, Frost. It's real. Yes. And we all just need to deal with this new reality and move on. Gideon, I know you're a skeleton with one arm, but you could probably still carry Frost with your one skeleton arm. You feeling up to that? Easily. He's all right. right. So pick him up. A medium. Gricko, I feel like I could carry you. <coughs> I'm too heavy. <laughs> I grab him around the, the, the waist and I pick him up. Yeah, he, he weighs beat like 30 pounds. Oh, cool. I, I, I didn't know, know you were so strong. Around. I didn't know you were so strong. All right, who's come out? I reach down with one arm and pick him up. Oh, see, you're dancing. It's so the, nice. Over the shoulder. It's it's so so nice. We're losing daylight. Let's just keep, we just got a soldier on. We just got to, hopefully someone at, oh, the, at the carnival can fix this. articulation. I'll give you. I'll give you everything I got left. Just when I die in this swamp, don't let them know Who's what he? happened on Bear Paw Mountain. Who's he? Let's go. Send in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what happened. <laughs> who's he? Who's he? Who's he? Who's he? You're, you're, whatever you're doing, come on, just follow us. Sing and follow. And with that, Kremi picks up Gricko and. Gideon picks up Frost and you begin to move through the swamp. It takes about 10 minutes or so of struggle before you finally find a place where you can step out of the muck. And upon getting out of the muck, you feel a shift in yourself. Gricko, you're not gold, but you are pretty fucked up. That was a really strong punch. <laughs> Kremi, ah! you don't have vines coming out of you. That's ridiculous. Oh. Gideon, you are incredibly hungry. You have puked up everything oh. that was in your stomach for days. God, I'm but so hungry. your arm's back and you're not a skeleton anymore. Oh, look at and that. And Frost, your legs actually are fused at the knee. How you're going to deal with it, who knows? I'm going to have to do this for the rest of the campaign. I'm just kidding. They're not. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. My they release. fucking legs. <laughs> wow, your shoulder is surprisingly comfortable, Gideon. Wow, I'm sorry I threw up on you so much. But the good news is that none of it was intestine. Like yes, it was mostly bile, it seems. Yeah, yeah. So. And shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shrimp. Some eggs from breakfast. And, then, and a little bit of shrimp got up. Yeah. He, 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 by the time he was throwing up on me, he'd already emptied his bowels. Or uh. his, his <laughs> stomach bowels. That wasn't part of the RP, bro. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why he pooped himself also, but it happened. Because when you yeah. die, you shit yourself. Well. I'm going to swamp gas, but. Who? Oh. I bet Dad. people at Ogway want to sell that stuff. Good, good hit, Gideon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't break your arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Uh... Oh, this is this is persistent. <laughs> yeah, because Gideon punched him in the face. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry about that. I really thought the swamp kind of it really got away from us back there. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, I thought I was gold. <laughs> Do you need uh... That's ridiculous. You think his nose is broken? Oh, <laughs> oh, it's like, it's like <laughs> oh no. no. <laughs> Oh. You gotta, you gotta do the trick. Oh! Oh! God! I've been saving that. I've been saving that. I can feel that in my oh jawbones. My I feel like my face. If is you want to fuck with your friends, take, take two thumbs, put them on the back no. of your teeth, and then 
like this, but hide it with your hands and move it back oh, and forth. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, That's that was good. awful. On that Jesus. note, thank you, Wildcat Daryl, <laughs> and then Adelim, and Stark Raving Riley. Thank, thank you. Yes. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Adventures Fair. And with that, you lament about what you've just been through, but you continue to make your way through the through the swamp. And you begin to notice the mangrove trees, as you look around, are not mangrove trees anymore. They're cypress trees. Oh. And you see one of your familiar um, one of your familiar uh, what's the word? Why can't I think of it? Landmarks. You oh. see one of the familiar mm. landmarks that you were looking for. And you realize that you have traveled for about a day. You are definitely getting tired, but you're back in the swamp and you're exactly where you should have been given the amount that you've traveled. You look behind you and there are no mangrove trees to, to be seen. It is all cypress. Cypress all the way down. Mm. Oh, that's weird. What's that? Well, I mean, look, if that's not where we came from. That's the direction we came from. What in the hell? Give it to me straight, guys. How do I look? <laughs> oh, you just rub some dirt in there. You'll be fine. I mean, you've probably looked worse over the years I've known you. You could probably use medical attention. <laughs> uh, I to get a banana. <laughs> what? Uh, you'll see as a spectral Goralin. <laughs> will appear and will hand me a bunch of bananas. Thank you. As I cast Goodberry. <laughs> good banana. Is it good, good banana? banana. Is it I good love banana. good banana. It's good banana. It's good banana. banana. It's good banana. <laughs> yeah, it's good banana. <laughs> Just one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you open it up upside down. Uh, <laughs> now he's eating it with the rind on. <laughs> oh, come on, keep on my own. Oh, there it is, bananas. There it is, bananas. This is one of those makes you full for a day. I like, I like bananas. Can we have just one banana? The, th- the three of us, can we have three bananas? Oh yeah, I'm quite hungry. Yeah, I can use a banana and he did puke up his breakfast. I'm gonna take two yeah. bananas. <laughs> Unless that'll kill It's you. good potassium. Now remember, open it from okay. what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna say no to that face. <laughs> from the oh, bottom. Oh, I'm you go. Here's two bananas open it from you. the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so not with the little stick piece. No, 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 you want to amb- open it. The, the stick is a handle, see? Oh, oh my god. Okay, okay. I'm gonna do this wrong. <laughs> After distributing that, uh, oh, it's only three bananas left. <laughs> there it is again, three bananas. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, don't fuck with us, it's the, the, the great Goralin spirit, <laughs> whose name I will tell you probably next session. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Yes. Pretty good though. I mean, it's sort of like super, supernatural bananas. Oh, yeah. it tastes great. Your face of the, uh, the side of your face is turning from purple back to green. Yeah, that's no, a, that's I a mean, really now good sign. My, my jaws reel on a little bit. I'm the swelling's going down. I feel like you know it's not so bad. Four hit points. <laughs> there we go. I feel like I've eaten for four he's days still, worth. He's still missing his two front teeth. <laughs> That'll grow back. I'm a goblin. <laughs> no, no popsicles for a while. <laughs> oh. I could really use a popsicle anywhere. <laughs> Anyways. We continue. Let's I, go. It's, you You march for a full day. Oh, never mind. I'm tired. I mean, how y'all feeling? Well, I'm getting concerned. We don't have a map. And the swamp seems endless. Is there a chance that we could miss the carnival and lose out on millions of gold and all of the magical items that were promised to us? I mean, no. he wasn't real specific. Trust but... me. When we get close enough, there's going to be no way that we're going to miss it. We're going to see it for miles through the swamp. I can't believe I forgot. Yes, you would be able to tell us if we're getting close based on music. Yeah, I mean, music, there's, there's uh, lights and there's music and there's all sorts of, uh, you know, goings on, you know? Yes. Uh, games. 
like the carnivals that we ran. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's like it's bought, like way nicer, you know. I mean, I'll say we did. We did. We had a really great operation. Crap. So you set up camp and you go to sleep. We do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, enjoy long, do we enjoy a long rest? Fucking hell, yo! Fucking ten! I'm sorry, I don't make I don't make fives in this small world. He said, "We are not asleep." <laughs> we speed run sleep. <laughs> <laughs> We're never gonna get through this campaign. No, this no. is not gonna happen. No, 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 all you needed to do was write two sentences <laughs> yeah. in the next forty-five episodes. Yeah, the problem is there's a fucking book. Oh. Oh. We're gonna campaign up. Madule. <laughs> I was like, you know, we can have one session before they get to the carnival, or ten. I guess that's fine. Yeah, we can just go. <clears throat> so you do. Uh, you find a nice place, and you set up rest. camp, oh, yeah. and you uh, wouldn't. No. Oh. It's too fucking late on D&D Beyond. <laughs> Nothing happened to you anyway. I don't know. My legs are a little sore. <laughs> no, they're not. They were never pieced together. But my... I have the memory of I it. wasn't tensing my muscles in reality, at least a little. Um, yeah. Sure. I don't care. Anyway. <laughs> my, my glutes. <laughs> my fucking glutes. <laughs> that was quite a workout. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Derek. I love you, Derek. Um, you set up your camp. Do you do, you do a watch? Is that something that I think your we group would that, do? We would have had a system that we would do having traveling for years. Yeah, and given that we're in the swamp mm-hmm. and what just happened, we would do our normal watch schedule. Which is? That will be meaningfully important. Uh, I would probably take the last watch yeah. so that I would get probably get a head start on breakfast. Um, getting that cooked up. Okay. Um, and I would take the first watch. I'd want to stay up and uh, enjoy the quiet <laughs> before having a full night's rest and enjoying breakfast to wake up to. And then it'd be Grico, because I think Grammy would get pissed off being woken up by Grico. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd prefer a Gideon one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Cross Grico, Gideon, Grammy. Right. Yeah. Yep. You yeah, set yeah, up your watch, sense. you make your camp, you're in the familiar <laughs> cypress trees of, of the swamp, and you know that you have about a day's journey ahead of you um, before you get to where you imagine that the carnival is. And you you set up your tents, you make your dinner uh, around the fire, you talk about your day and that even though right now you have less than you had hoped, that if this all works out, you will be, you'll be millionaires. You can pay uh, Remy Guru back and some if you want to get in his good graces and you would still have so much gold that you are set for life and three unread letters in someone's pack. (laughs) And you decide to go to bed. Frost, I need you to roll a perception check for me, please. That's where I'm a Viking. The night is quiet, the birds are chirping, the bats are flying, the cicadas are doing cicada things. (laughs) Seven. (laughs) Okay. Um... You will be rolling at disadvantage because mm-hmm. you did not perceive um, initially. Rolling because I, I Going, rolled a natural seven or a dirty seven. So. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm just saying uh, for what is about to happen. Oh, I see. Yeah, there will be more rolls, and you'll be rolling at disadvantage I because you did not make the perception check. Uh, as soon as everyone goes to sleep, I'm distracted by my own thoughts. You are. You're thinking. You're. Your glutes hurt from how long your knees were fused together. And you're still not sure, did that actually happen? Well, it definitely happened to you, but was Gricko really gold? 
and you just didn't see it. Was that what had had happened, that you were not able to perceive his condition the way they weren't able to perceive yours? Or were you the only one that was truly affected? What is the situation that happened there when all of a sudden you hear a voice behind you in, in, the, in the forest? Look at me. Look at me. I look at the ground. Who's there? Speak up. Look at me. I want to suck the marrow from your bones. Look at me. I'm going to try to scan up to the roots of the trees around me and stay <clears throat> below the horizon in how I scan the 360 degree perimeter of our camp. So are you trying to look at it or are you just trying to look <laughs> at the perimeter? I'm trying to look and if I were going to see something I imagine it would be above the horizon line. I'm looking for feet or some sign of something, but I'm avoiding eyes. Uh, roll a perception check. Uh, or I guess it would be investigation because you're intentionally looking for it. A disadvantage. Perception? Mm-hmm. 14. You scan <clears throat> around at the bottom and you see absolutely nothing. Who are you? Look name, at me. Name yourself. Why should I look at you? I want to rip the flesh from your bones. Grigo? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to the Grigo's bedroll and and see if I can wake him as I'm looking away and down. I would say you're easily able to wake him. Grigo. <laughs> If I'm gonna we, grab uh, my totems, like uh, some of my totems, instinctively. Danger of Grego. Oh, danger! Yes, there's a voice speaking to me. It wants to f- rip the flesh from my bones and potentially endanger the rest of the camp. We have to be on high alert. Look out! Look at me! Don't don't look into the eyes of this creature. Keep your eyes closed. Don't low. listen to him, Grego. Look at me. Do I hear that? Hmm. <gasps> It's really spooky. And roll a perception check. Ooh, man, I'm not rolling great. Perception, you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be a an eleven. And you will be rolling at disadvantage if rolls are required going forward. Uh. <clears throat> uh. Why? <laughs> I'm gonna start to scoot. Uh, make I want to eat your intestines like soup. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> are you a monster? I know a lot of monsters like to eat intestines like soup, but did you know you mis- Are you Grigo. are you misunderstood? Look at me. So you know, I, I would normally say, oh, <clears throat> sure, look at you. I mean, that's a pl- you've asked so nicely, but uh, seeing how there's creatures like the basilisk where you can just look at them and he turn to stone, I don't want some horrible curse to befall me, in case you are a uh, sentient creature of some similar properties. Good job, Grico. I applaud your effort. Oh, oh, thank you, Frosty. And I am trying Thank to you. wake Gideon. And I will say that's easily <sighs> enough to wake up at least Kremmy. Uh, Gideon snoring very loud. Uh, keep it down, will you? Kremmy, wake up. There's what? danger. Danger with Kremmy. Oh, fuck. Get, get up. Okay. Look okay. at me. I'm going to take my whistle and blow as hard as I can as I will wake up Hootsie and, and attempt to wake up Gideon. What the hell's going on around here? I can't get 20 minutes of sleep. Look at me. Oh, don't look, don't look at his spooky voice, uh, Hootsie. Keep your eyes down. What? Stay with me. Stay with your papa. Yes, who, who, who is that? Are you looking? <clears throat> uh, well, he just told me not. I'm sort of looking at the ground. Okay. Roll a perception check for me. Uh, nine. Okay, you will be at disadvantage if rolls are required going forward. Uh, looking at the ground, you see nothing. Gideon, what? look at me. Oh, what? what? Why? Who are you? I'm going to rip the flesh from your bones. 
Look at me. You ripped the flesh right off my fist when I put it in your mouth. Look at me. Now, what, what the hell's going on around here? Gideon, there's a voice and we're not sure what it means, but it seems like it's hungry and we don't want to look at it in the eyes. Do you understand? Yeah, I think so. Well, either keep your eyes closed or keep them to the ground. Who to you do the same? <laughs> and you continue to hear the voice as it seems as almost as if it's circling you and you keep hearing it um, threat, threatening you, talking about um, feasting on your flesh, um, slurping, slurping your brain out of your skull. Uh, chewing on your eyeballs, things yeah. of that nature, and all the while calling for you to look look at it. We need um, rest. And you are you looking at it, looking for it? I listen to Frosty. I would, I would keep my eyes down. Um, yeah, he's roll not, a perception roll. check. <clears throat> Pretty good. Twenty-one. Be the first one to pass. You, you keep your eyes down, but you look around. You hear, "Look at me! Look at me! Look at me!" As it moves quickly, and you follow the line of the trees with your eyes, and you realize that there is a movement that's happening, but it is incorporeal. Whatever's there doesn't have form. Who? Uh-huh. And you don't look up to look at it directly, but you realize that there is no no form there. As you start to look up, you begin to see that as you get closer to where this thing exists, it starts to, a form starts to create. And as you look down, it once again becomes incorporeal. And I would say with that role, you realize that as long as you don't look at this thing, it cannot create, a, it cannot create form. Hey, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but it's kind of whooshing around. It's not making any noise, though. I don't think, I think it's kind of some Big dumb ghost. <laughs> I've been struggling. Look at me. Struggling to keep track of it. Where is it? Do you see it? Yeah, it's right over there. But it just won't take form unless you're looking directly at it. Well, I think. And you hear a loud, as you what, say these words, you hear a loud um, screech, almost like a screech of pain, of anger. And then all of a sudden, um, bits of the trees in the in the area be ripped out by their roots, by this incorporeal thing as it rushes off into the forest, realizing that it is not going to, it is not going to get you to, to listen to its demands. Yeah, you take that, you big dumb ghost baby. <laughs> I think that was a ghost. You did well. Uh, roll an intelligence check for me. What was that? I mean, is this something that happens around Agwe in the, the, the Whippewallo Swamp? No, I mean, none of this makes sense. Usually and it's... as you look around, Crummy, uh, I would say roll another perception check. No. Nine. That's better. You, uh, <laughs> that sounds like maybe something you've read about or you know something about, but you can't quite put your your finger on it. 17. Very tired. Ooh. You look My around goodness. and you you see that though you are in a grove of cypress trees, that the trees <laughs> right outside of where your camp is are all mangrove trees. Oh, fuck. What? Look around. We're back in that cuckoo banana swamp. No offense to your growling friend. <laughs> Very helpful bananas. They taste quite nice. They're pretty good. Uh, uh, do we keep moving? I don't. I don't want to camp here. What the hell is going on? I don't this doesn't know. happen in Agua. Not as long as we've been here. No, it do- it doesn't. It and, and that's why I'm. It ha- guy, it has to do with the carnival. I mean, there, there's no other way. Maybe something is is because it's in town. Something's going on with the surrounding swamp. Anything used to happen when you were there, Grico? Uh, let me think if, they would, if it's some horrible undead apparitions. I would say what you would remember from the few days that you worked there, because it wasn't long. Yeah, no. Um, is that days. you were told by many of the other witch light hands that the veil around the car- carnival between the material plane and the Feywild was very thin, and that there were um, unseely Fey that liked to make their way into the surrounding area and they would warn you against leaving the carnival at all costs. 
Um, and so you would you would know that. Guys, <clears throat> yeah. I think we're getting close. There's some. I think that was an unseemly fay. <laughs> what? An unseemly fay. They what do you mean? Seemly. Yeah, an, un- an unseemly fay. They said. They, they told us uh, an orientation after they gave us, um... <laughs> the lunch was okay. Uh, <laughs> it was cold spaghetti. It was right after lunch. It was, was, like, oh, big, was, oh, no, it was, it was okay, it was fine. Uh, cold spaghetti sounds pretty good. Yeah, it it a sure. glass of orange juice and uh, a Box piece of... Crackers, a, no, a piece of bread with uh, butter on it. Oh, that'd be better than us. <laughs> um, I'd eat the hell out of that. No, we're getting close, we're close. It's the vet, the the fail between the Feywild, which is I believe uh, where, where little Hoochie the Coochie came from. It's Finn. That's how it travels in, in, in and out. And so that was an unseemly fay they mentioned that they are not nice. I think un, uh, they they didn't like them because they're very unseemly. <laughs> well, if we're gonna make our way into the Feywild Prismere, Finn is what we're looking. So we're getting close. Such a good thing. Are you saying we're in the Feywild right now? Is that oh, what that means? I think what Grico is saying is that things are bleeding through from the Feywild. Maybe that that's... this is a sign. Yeah. So like these trees are from the Feywild, but not that we're in the Feywild. As the veil is thin here, and so I guess those trees are Feywild trees, and those trees which you used to are non-Feywild trees. See. And so that means that we're getting closer. And the more spooky stuff that happens, I guess. But we gotta keep out. They are very tricksy. They're not very nice. Not very seemly, obviously. It's in the name. <laughs> as long as they have no more of that swamp gas, I think that we'll be safe and fine. Yeah. Well, what are you thinking? Are we good to? Are we good to fall asleep? I mean, we don't have a choice. I'm so tired. You immediately hear the sounds of music pierce the air. And as you look Uh up towards the sky, Uh you see a cloud of light off in the distance, maybe a mile off in the distance. Beautiful, shining, sparkling lights, fireworks going off in the night sky. This is not possible for you to be this close to the carnival. But as you look through the mix of cypress and mangrove trees, there it is on the horizon very clearly. The witch-like carnival is but a mere mile away. We're closer than I thought! What in the hell? That's it! That's a show up! 10, 20 minutes, we'll be there. <sighs> it's just right there. All what right, well, I guess no time like the present. I can smell the funnel cake and animal cages. Do I smell any of that? No. You're a mile away. <laughs> it's more of metaphorical as if I, I've been there before, so memory, memory, memory is coming mm. back. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I you thought know. you meant you could literally smell it. <laughs> oh, no. I was trying to... I'm not going to... I shouldn't say it. I'm going to say it. So he said funnel cake. I'm like, what would they call it? Fanal cake? <laughs> oh, fanal cake. <laughs> I love fanal <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Who doesn't love Fainal? Fainal. I mean, I, I, when, when I hear Fainal, I just want to chow down. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just want to spread my powdered sugar. <laughs> Get a little bit of that jam. Yeah. <laughs> never, never mind. <laughs> you know, Gid. I feel like funnel cake from Feywild would be the opposite of fun. So it would be like Boringle or something like. Oh, was, like penal cake. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it writes itself. <laughs> That's worse. That's worse. Spread my powdered sugar over the, over the penal cake. <laughs> would you like. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So anyway, that's what you see. What do you do? Yeah, crummy. Get, well, why couldn't we figure out fireworks like that? We couldn't even figure out paying people. You want fireworks? Well, I don't know. Can't you, like, you're basically 40% fire. Well, that's a fair point. I guess just you shooting fire <laughs> in the air isn't really quite the same thing. Let's just walk up and see if we can buy a ticket. Well, we already we have, have tickets. tickets. 
second, but we have to see if we can find one. Let's walk up and find the ticket booth. <laughs> Something intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Something, Something intelligent in. about Char. <laughs> <laughs> Something intelligent about the green matter in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> my skull. Uh, well, uh, I know we're tired, but we're here ahead of schedule. I mean, I'd rather it feels like it's safer in there than it is out here, so... It's a lot more seemly in there than it is out here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let me get dressed first. And I start to, like, go get my jacket and my pants and all dress agitation and everything so that I'm uh, cleaned up and I'll tie my bow tie on and... Well, we all need to eat just like Uncle Frosty says, Hootsie. The breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Thank you. So let's all eat breakfast before, and, and do our stretches before we make our way into the swamp. Do we have any food? It's like two in the morning. So, I slept. I mean, he was first watch. You slept for what, like an hour? <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes? <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like, well, when to sleep, so I feel no, like, I feel like any, breakfast. still taste the bananas. Actually, all of you feel like you are very rested and you have enjoyed a long rest. I don't know about oh, that, Chris. I mean, we're not so rested. I would say it, it almost <laughs> feels like you've enjoyed two days worth of rest. Oh, well. I feel very restful. Mm. It was actually a quite nice nightmare swamp <laughs> full of unseemly times. <laughs> Thanks, unseemly swamp. <laughs> See you next time. All right, well, to the carnival. Well, I'm sorry if I only read you one bedtime story, Hootsie, instead of two. Oh, Hootsie's dead. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you she has a burst. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It's actually been okay. two years and you How are you better, feeling, but... Lucy, about going back? I know that I didn't really consult you because we're the adults. <laughs> but you're going to be okay, right? Because you were with, with your Papa and, oh, and Uncle Frosty and Uncle Crummy and Uncle Gideon. You okay? You good? Is everything going to be okay? If you need any time, you tug on my sleeve because I'm much taller than you are. Does she need some kind of like disguise or you think, you know... <gasps> Like the, the vest and whatever hat she has going on is enough. Well, they changed management, didn't they? No. It's These been were... eight years. You imagine no one's going to recognize her. No one's. Look, look, look how big she is. She's gigantic. They're not going to recognize her. That's ridiculous. I guess it's, yeah, maybe. She's they... huge. And with that, you pack up your tents. <laughs> you do. You, you put out your fire and you begin to make your way towards the carnival. You, you march that... 30-ish minutes that it takes to walk and you are coming up on the carnival you can hear laughter you can hear the sounds of children um <laughs> screaming but joyfully <laughs> like on rides and shit um it definitely seems like it is a place of joy these the smells and the sounds of the carnival are overwhelming as a sound pierces the happiness back a little ways behind you the way that you just came you hear the sound of a feminine voice screaming as if in the most pain oh like behind us yes i'll turn immediately and see what the hubbub is about you can hear the screaming Oh, we can't oh see God. the origin of the screen. It's um off in like a thicket. You would have walked past the. Sorry, sorry, Mike. Not that Mike. This Mike. Um, <laughs> it's think about it as if you'd walked past, and then an area off to the side, there was someone in there, and they begin to scream. Oh, Gridco, keep it down, man. He's from this this thicket here. Join me, Gideon. Help, 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 help this person. Oh, wow. Oh, this feels like a trick. Yeah, I don't it, know. It could be unseemly fate. Wait, are, are you okay? I don't want to scream really loud. So. Are the are the manifold trees still around? Yeah, all the trees are a mix of mangrove and cypress. Oh, so I think it's like Rico said. Well, maybe keep your eyes down, but if you want to check it out, we'll we'll back you up. You can't just keep your your eyes down when someone's screaming for help. That's how. And I'm gonna run. Okay. Oh. 
Uh, it does oh. not. It, it oh, takes you maybe two head, minutes to make your way toward through the thicket until you find yourself in a small uh, a small area where the um, the foliage has been matted down, and you immediate you are keeping your eyes down. Your recent um, your recent experience with an unseely fay being what it is. Um, and you immediately see that the green foliage is laced with fresh blood. And as you as you trail your eyes along the ground, you see laying in the middle of this area is what appears to be a fairy, uh, a female fairy. Her, um, her skin is looking sallow. Um, she's sweating profusely and she is crying at this point she's no longer screaming she's sobbing into her hands her her breath is coming in shallow and as you look at her you realize that her wings have been cut from her back do I recognize her from our interaction with Madric she's a fairy not a pixie so oh, she's about apologies. two my feet tall apologies. Yes. two to three feet tall um, and um, her wings have been severed from her from her back and you can see that the oh blood that is spilling out of them is coating the the ground around her Thanks. and she's sobbing profusely into her hands I will I, I will run up and uh, excuse me miss I'm I'm sorry uh, I, I see that you're in great pain I see that you're hurting <laughs> my wings it, my wings it, he took my wings you're gonna be all right he took I know, I know, I know. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, we'll, we'll get this sorted, but first uh, we need to solve this I don't problem. You're feel bleeding. So good. I know, I know you are. I know you are. We need healing. We need yeah, healing. Yeah, no, here you go. Uh, enjoy this pleasant drumming as a huge growl. You're gonna hear this uh, tribal drumming as a huge uh, blue growl and spear is gonna appear above me as I'm going to use my uh, my star form, but my, my my primal spirit form, and I'm going to uh, cast uh, cure uh, cure wounds, and it'll it'll be a, a similar a soothing tune. Uh, can you fix them, my wings? My wings? Can you fix them? Uh, 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 not immediately. However, uh, uh, y- you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Roll a medicine check. Uh, so with my Garalan form. I do 1d8 plus 5 to her, and... Okay. And additional? Because, yeah, it's basically every time I heal, I love these it's, it's additional healing. 21. Okay. It's pretty good. Uh, heal, uh, cure wounds, so it's uh, 11 plus 6, 17 points of healing. Okay. You you get down on your knees, and you, um, you hold her tiny head in your hands. And she's looking up at you. You can see her eyes are bloodshot. You can see the veins throbbing in her neck. Her skin is um, very, very pale. Um, And she is, um, she had been sweating profusely, but now her skin is just clammy. As she looks up at you, you can see the, the clearly what would be arteries that had run through her wings. And you can tell immediately that she is not going to survive. What is your your name? Lexi. That's a beautiful name, Lexi. Uh, Lexi Potts. Who who did this to you? How can we help? I can't speak his name. You're you're gonna be all right, but we need to know who his name is in order to help you. This is... He's he's going to Brismere. He's gonna wake her. I know it. I know he is. I shouldn't have tried to warn them. I shouldn't have. He took my wings. It's all right. <laughs> am, I gonna, am I gonna be okay? You're gonna be fine. Look at this lovely, charming no, Gorallon. That feels so good. I feel really dizzy. You're gonna be just fine, Lexi. <laughs> You're with the spirits. Do fairy wings grow back? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm really tired. Yes, it's all right to sleep. But we need to know his name before we can I heal you. I, He'll know I told you. Hear me. If you want to feel better, you have to tell us. I can't tell you. I can't. It's fucked up. I'm sorry. He's going to Brismere. You can get there through the carnival, but you shouldn't. Don't do it. All right, Lexi. If he finds you. Is he going to wake? Fuck, what's the name? Is he gonna wake Sabilna? 
You're already in too deep. I shouldn't have said anything. You're hurting. You, you need you needed medical attention. Can, can you grow my wings back? Can you grow them back? Soon. Okay. Yeah. Soon. I just need to sleep. And then, and then I'll figure out how to... Maybe we can make a pact. And if we make a pact and I promise I'll tell you, then that could override the pact that I made so that I... And then I can tell you his name. Yeah. I'll just... I'll sleep a little. And then... And then... When I wake up in the morning, then I can tell you. Mm-hmm. And you can see your wings are starting to uh, grow back as I'm going to uh, a the spectral form of a hippogriff is going to uh, kind of swirl around her and I'm going to attempt to guide it so that the wings are kind of where her her wings are. See beautiful feathery okay. wings. All right, they'll grow back. They'll grow back. See, they're all, it's already starting to work, little uh, one. I'll try and help you in the morning. Can I, As I cast she her. looks up at you and she kind of nuzzles her cold face into your hands. Can I sleep here? Nice and warm. Just for a little bit. You can stay here all night, please. And she, her eyes slowly flutter and you watch as her chest rises and falls. And then stops. I'll take my hat off. Me too. What was that? It's too early in the day for that. I guess too late in the evening. My power didn't work. As the, the growling will kind of shimmer back into the totems that I keep on my person. Oh, nah. Why didn't it work? I don't know. I'm, I'm new to this. Maybe I wasn't strong enough. Maybe I didn't do it right. Why would somebody even do this? What? I don't understand. Are we looking for a archfey? Why? Why? Why do this? To this poor girl. <clears throat> hey, look away, Hootsie. It's gonna be okay. Um, me and, and your uncles are gonna talk about this, and we're gonna make sure that that she's okay, Hootsie. Okay. Um. Did you see the nature of a wounds, Frost? As you can see, she has had her wings plucked. I think she lost most of her life essence from this injury. Is there anything magical about the wounds that would I would think would like prevent healing or anything like that? I would say, looking at them, you can... I won't make you roll an arcana for it. Looking at it, you can tell that they were severed in a way where there's a clear magical essence that seems to be preventing the blood from clotting. So I just delete it, basically. Yeah, this... It looks like whatever did this, they left it to die, and that was the intention. Oh, fuck. Probably some political shit that we're getting mixed up in. Do you think it was an unseemly fate? Do you think that was the thing that... that was trying to get us to look at it? Could have been. Oh, All she no. said was he, and he, she couldn't say his name. And she did mention she was under some kind of fey pact that prevented her from giving up the name. I think Frost would have produced that. Yeah. So. Oh, boy. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Not one bit. I don't know what's worse. Throwing the guru empty-handed or getting mixed up in fey politics. You're the only one who can answer that, Grammy. We don't know Mr. Guru. Probably the fake politics. Oh, gods. All right, what should we do with her? Should we... Should we bring her to the carnival? As no. you hold her in your arms, you begin to watch as her body begins to decay at a rapid rate. Um, and you begin to see toadstools popping up in random parts of her body as she, as the earth of the fae, of the fae wild, begins to claim her. 
and you quickly see that around you a ring of toadstools begins to form what is commonly known to you as a fairy ring and and and, and that's we're at the center of the perimeter of that ring you are in like, the center of it yes in mind Lexi 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 Potts, I think is Lexi Potts. Said her name was. No. no. Rest in peace, Lexi. That's a bummer. Her wings aren't here. Mm-mm. It sounds like we have did this. Roll well, an investigation same... check. Say what? It says like whoever did this is heading to the same place we are. And token wings Me? for some reason. Greco. Am I okay? Would I think to use guidance on myself? Sure. Okay. I, don't care. I will channel the last bit of the Garalan spirit. Oh. Uh, I need it. Yeah. <laughs> shit. Investigation. The DC's ten. I don't think I'm gonna hit. Well, hold on. Invest- yeah, a good D four roll. You'll be all right. And guidance. No, it's a three. Oh, that's. Uh, not, thought it was an eight. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. I can't. I can't succeed. Uh, D four. No. Yeah. I, the max I can get is seven. Oh, can, how we twist? You can. You twist it. Yeah, let's twist. Let's twist it. Let's twist. You have a couple of twists. I'm gonna yeah. take it. I'm gonna take the twist. <clears throat> we have six twists. So it's I'm meant gonna... to be. I got a two. Mm. Mm. Yeah, looking around you, <clears throat> you see nothing. Well, Lexi Potts, uh, we didn't know you very much. I'm sure you would have been found. Would have locked Hoochie. Hoochie would have locked you. Ah. Uh, but we are heading in the direction of that strange man. What took your wings? And so at the very least, we will find that man and we will find your wings. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's go get cheered up at the carnival, fellas. Keep your uh, eyes open, your ears open for any mention of Lexi. I'm not going to bring her up myself. Unless I think I'm talking to someone who really knows her. You understand? I have a sense of what's going on. Or just a, a hunch, but... I mean, if they have factions or they have, you know... Uh, she's probably working for someone that's sleeping. Maybe that's where Zabilna is. Maybe she's asleep. Mm. And maybe she's trying to protect Zabilna and someone wants to wake her up and for whatever reason she doesn't want to be woken up. Either way, our job is to find Zabilna. So I just hope we don't have to wake her up ourselves. We may very well need to (coughs) earn those millions if you understand my meaning. And with right. that, <clears throat> you solemnly make your way towards the carnival. You retrace your steps back to the path, and you continue to make your way along. This time, when you get to the outskirts, it's not with that same sense of excitement and joy. There is a somberness about this, given what you've just seen, what you've just witnessed on the outskirts of this carnival. But you have made it here. And you walk along the gate. You can hear the sounds of children laughing. You can hear the rides creaking. Um, It sounds like the level of joy inside this place is much needed at this point. As you round a corner and you see the large sign illuminated, the Witchlight Carnival, and off to the right or off to the left side is a ticket booth that is fully illuminated as well. And sitting on a stool, looking straight at you, is a goblin. As he looks out and says, "Welcome to the Witchlight Carnival. Come and get your tickets if you don't already have them, and let's have a grand old time." And that is where we'll end the session. Gotta give it up. <laughs>